I mean, that's, that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos, I don't- But where did you read this again? This was, uh, Internet? This was on the internet, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And I, I just don't understand why people do it. That's, that's what got me attention. Cause me, um- Sorry, what have, what have I learned from this? Um, that if you, if you wanted to get one, you know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that. And, and there's another one. But it's just the fact, I mean, I don't know. I, I so would, give us the snappy title of this, this education why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always think when I see people with, with loads of tattoos, like there's that fellow who we were talking about the other week in Scotland oh. who, who was covered 99% in tattoos. Yes. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've, you've, you've done it now. Yeah. Um, my, one of my uncles, right, Tattoo Stan, he, he, um, He's just caked in them. Tattoos. Right. <laughs> I don't think he's my proper uncle, but it's just like me, me dad's <laughs> got gay. Tattoos. No, he does. That's, that's the province in Russia, isn't it? He does got loads of mates who. When like, you say he's not your proper uncle, I do you know like when just someone comes around with your right uncle Stan? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there was like there was um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. Okay. It was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know what he Jimmy did. Jimmy the Hat? Yeah. Oh, and, did uh, he wear and a hat? No. No. There was, um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. You sure he wasn't a relative? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us, like, big bags of potatoes and that. Fred Veg, yeah, okay. And it was, it was Tattoo Stan. Right. And he was just caked in them, and I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been, like, you know, I suppose if, if you're born with a name like Tattoo Stan. <laughs> exactly. You're destined, Sorry, aren't are, are you? Really? Were they like a 1950s gang? I'm worried yeah, about, like, I'm worried about doing a bank job. What was his name? The Hat? What was his Jimmy, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like, you know, when, um, y your mate sort of like, you know, uh, eight foot and huge, you call him <laughs> Little John or Tiny? Mm. Do you think- Well, the fact that he never yeah, wore a hat. Yeah, they went, hold on, I've, I've noticed some hat about Jim. Go on. No hat. And they go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. But me, um, me Uncle Stan, he had, like, loads of them. He did, did them himself. Oh, dear. And it was always <laughs> oh, thing. God. What was it, what was it things like? It was, he had, like, the- A cross. Cut here. Cut one, here, on made the, on in Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, good, you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And don't and do it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that, that was the other thing. But, like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had, like, all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, uh, what are they called? Yeah. Oh, God, it is. <laughs> Tattoo Stan Jr. Yeah. And, um... Paul shits the bed. <laughs> um... I'm trying to... <laughs> oh, Wabai Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Frankie never amounts to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So he had like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. I don't think he's mine. <laughs> so he did uh, all this stuff. Oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you about that. No, 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 I Carl. Hey, so, I just, to be honest, I don't know that if I don't know. If, maybe you just have to picture this. But my picture, my sister <laughs> took, had to take a photo once. She was working in like a factory, not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball kind of lank-haired weird guy living uh, working in this factory, and he made his own. He did his own tattoos. And she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now, bear in mind, it was the kind of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like 15. <laughs> this is the sort of person who designed their own, like, rock, heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of person. So, I mean, like, was it, was it a dragon thought, with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No. You're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself. He had it tattooed himself. And it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be very simple, I think, to make a cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a shower? Having a shower, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had- She'd, she'd been out, she'd, she was, uh, presumably- uh, She'd been out, been, been out, a lot of blood. 
Well, yeah, just... well, she, 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 uh, she was naked, so she, you could see her, 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 her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her yeah, away- bad spine. Was that she had, um, she did have some pointed teeth. And right. I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking- but, um, she, was the she, fact looking... she was having a shower was- Yeah, that, that is specific. weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it well, but he sort of drew in all the- he said to the eye, said, listen, I, I want a, a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be- he goes, well, you could put her in the shower, because then they went, pop well, her in the shower. That at least gives some kind yeah, of justification. That's the plot. That's the plot. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story if she's <laughs> in the shower. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just, uh, Pilkey. Because <laughs> for a minute I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. And what, what? Why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs> right, we'll do the answers to, uh, Robbusters next, yeah? Brilliant. <laughs> Buzz Cox. Still sounds brilliant, that. It is a cracker. They're from Manchester as well, Carl. So you got a little bit of pride there, eh? I think one of them's, uh, one of my mate's dad's. Really? Yeah, I think so. What's his nickname? Well, his name was, uh, I don't really want to say his name. Oh, okay. Laurie, his first name was. Yeah. Still, uh, still is, probably. Yeah. Uh, he was a and good what, you know those little fellas at school that didn't know each other, weren't related and weren't friends, could it be too obvious, that they had webbed, um, hands and big heads? Yeah. What were they, did they have any nicknames? Again, too obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Well, oh, big head, or, you know, sure. Oh, I bet you got that juggling, or... Frog right. twins. Yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys, because we've just had an email here, um, I hate to query you, Carl, and you're educating Ricky sections, I know you put a lot- don't read this, let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else, I, I forget who, who it was. She was just- she just tuned in, and she just heard you explaining the expression, letting the cat out of the bag. So, uh, it's all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by- by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly the 17th century, we're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims- well, uh, let me see, she, she says, uh, she uses both the words twaddle and crap, uh, in relation in relation to your definition. <laughs> oh. uh, she says, letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat letting the is cat, the cat of nine tails, of which uh, is. is a kind of whip thing that you, they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and get a whipping. Of course, it is. don't let the cat out of the bag, we need to cover something she, up. With she's she's talking nonsense, right? No, she's not. That's she the is. truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a yeah, well, that's the same way. Well, that's fine. They can have questions for the They're same They're not going to keep going on about people working on a boat to get loads of sailors. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have two phrases about the same thing. Can't They're not going to be going to do with their time. Think, think, think how many just coming up and stuff. Think how many metaphors have birds in them, and you know uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you? Have, you can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. They don't go. We've made one up about the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Don't, don't see your uh, email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so well, <laughs> let's, uh, give, us the answer let's give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um, you've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. That was LB. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, got that one. Uh, the third one, we'll jump to that one because you've got it. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's all over. That was GK. That's a great one. That's Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Glad it's night. Glad it's night. That's Glad that is night. brilliant, Carl. And the one that, uh, you're both having a problem with, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. FD. Go on. Fats Domino. Yeah? What? The dominoes. You play dominoes in a pub. The, the dominoes fat. Pub tables are quite small. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. Fats Domino. Rubbish. <laughs> so, do you want to pick a winner? Random rubbish. Winner? Well, Random winner. you say it's rubbish, but plenty of people got the right answer. Rubbish. Who um, do you want to go with? The bunch of, um, slightly rubbish prizes is, is going to Elliot K from Chigwell in Essex. Uh, well done to Elliot. I, I just, w I, can, before we go, can we just get an, an email off Anders? Because I think he must, well, I think we've probably turned him round with this show. <laughs> I would have thought so. I think he's going to be say, saying, coming to us with his tail between his legs, saying, <laughs> sorry lads, yeah. blinding show. I was wrong, you were right. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Uh, song for the Lovers is very exciting this yeah, week. Yeah, uh, we haven't had a song for the, uh, the Lovers or the Ladies for quite some time. Let's yeah, combine so the two. Sorry, and sorry. Yeah. John Martin, may you never. Let's end with Beautiful that. Beautiful We'll see you next time. So, yeah. Bye. Um, well I went for a what's-her-name, so you don't know. I, I've, I've had, mm. uh, problems with my legs. Oh. Right.
Christ almighty. He's the same what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 7 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. He went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week. He goes, now his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. I don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. And he's going, oh, right. Christ mm. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30 odd years, I've been working hard. And I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, uh, 33, sorry to start off with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? <laughs> well, I just have, I sort of, uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm Well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> kissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 years then, okay, good, Yeah, but right. I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I, and that was, that was hard graft. That's why I was bald and that, getting up at half four. <laughs> it all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked my height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, A, like it's a classic story that everyone should know, everyone and also like... the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah, no, explain so... what you mean. Just kick me out when I was when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands. You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go I kick me height. So you were so you were four and a half foot, and you've put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right. Okay. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go <laughs> get Carl Pilkington to kick his height. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so why, why did he fall over? Tickets. The neighbours were cracking <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, did, you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have kick the height. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like? What the fuck he's does that look like? <laughs> he's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, no. You, you, you stayed there. You, you sort of stayed oh, balanced. Christ but you almighty. Didn't think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back yeah. and uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done. Because when you get older, I mean, it was the kidney stone thing. Once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, Got to start looking after your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> well, you just... Do you think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then. I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You know, if there's anyone listening you could always there, hop. who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you awesome. what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella to uh, like a professional uh, leg rubber. Um, a professional leg rubber. Yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of like podcasts? I said, am I in charge of my brain or is my brain in charge of me? Yes, you remember what I said? That's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah, well, well listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber. Professional leg rubber, yeah. Right, and he is professional. Yeah. Right, Remember, so can... leg rubber, you haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right? or back, back rubbing as well, he does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, oh, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well. And your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but hurt. they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was well, this above a laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that. On oh, the okay. oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got yeah, towels. Halfway through, he's, yeah, halfway through, he said, "You haven't got twenty p. Have you for the dryer?" <laughs> 
<laughs> it's online there and he lifts the leg up yeah. and I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, you're, you're outside of the body. Is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. He does not sound like a doctor. The outside of your body's longer yeah. than the inside. <laughs> so he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he's going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid this as well. Mm. Mm. Put me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I've, I've quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that, so, mm. you know, that, that's, that He went, oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> he probably said that, he said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained yeah, professional rubber or...? He's a, a, a doctor, he's definitely a doctor. So anyway, mm. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. <laughs> he said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. So because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I told you, right? So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, "Oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's gullible enough to spend forty-six quid for this oh, hokum." He said, "You're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them." Rather than them being in charge of the So game. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you. <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up that was the first visit. That's the first I'd only been there about twenty two minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for forty eight quid. Right. But uh he he picked up on that yeah. within like fifteen no, he saw minutes. Right fucking soccer, can't he? <laughs> no, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, the don't, reason don't go to him again. The reason uh well I am doing I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times Why? and try what to get you? out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait, what's the wisdom he's gonna come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I will kind of, yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is- Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking- You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know like how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said, the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus. Right. He said, mm. uh, so what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh... Close your eyes and see... It. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just leaving them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing, close your eyes, you're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. <laughs> you're just asleep. So he said, uh... Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? He said, I'm just thinking about nothing <laughs> else. I said, He's a witch! <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he say so you didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there. And it just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was... You were, even though you were thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next day, someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> You were still using oh, your face even though they were What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking down at me foot. You were trying to see through your eyelids at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm gonna die! I am going to die! Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember them. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Because oh they, 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 they oh, pinpoint they things. They all the tic-tacs they've ever Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> yeah. Three? No. <laughs> 
to. No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> we mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, I, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that, very st strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. So you no, remember no, that? No, no, were you, no, would you, no, you know, weren't there, were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember well, having you one of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, okay, um, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of, uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? No. We I was... lost our truck for you, yeah. When I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in and I just couldn't open my eyes. But why? I don't understand. Why were they glued? Why were they glued? Why were they glued? What do you mean they were glued? But why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just, you get a build up on, yeah. the, on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It... <laughs> when they came in and you could sense them looking at I didn't know they were there. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on, uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, them... I've got lots of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide. There's tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin, you wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week- This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's so you're smaller. writing or something. Um, but, okay, Shark Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learned to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me the week how you remember to, to what his name was. Che is like shake, and his, his surname is like guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway. <laughs> right, um. Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Shay. Right. It was something else, and Shay means buddy okay. in, uh, wherever he's, from, uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was, uh... By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now, this is all out of his own head. This is just... not pre-planned notes. No, this is, this is, I mean, it's I know it real. sounds written, but he's just yeah. Right, here on we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um... He, he had bad asthma as a kid, right? which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was, that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. He uh, had asthma, yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli- he wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yep, what's going on yep. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yep. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off. Yeah. And went to travel South America with his mate. Okay. On a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world. He thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. Yeah. You know, I, I could sure. do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he, um, he said, what I'm gonna do is, uh, join a gang right. that sort of, uh, is against the, uh, like the, like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. Am I right so far? Yeah. You're doing very well. Right, and and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. Right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, so uh, she said like this is this is uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto, he does medicine, should have him in our, in our sort of army, yeah. so when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, 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 oh, sure, 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 you're, 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 you know, you're condensing this. It's not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels like it. 
<laughs> you see, this is why I just wanted to uh, you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously, well, he made his name as part of the uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? <sighs> About. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And uh, obviously, so uh, he, he was a uh, uh, big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, 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 which country was he um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. They shot him, and his last words before he died, right? The, the guy's there with the gun, huh. and he he wasn't scared. He didn't. He wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, he said, "Go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man." Yeah. Said, yeah. And they shot him. And yeah. did did it tell you what happened to him after that? His dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a in a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet. feet and sent them to the. Uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to Ch to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave. Because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried. So it just meant that he was yeah, even more of a. Yeah, but that wouldn't work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves, what with different parts of his body? Oh, you've got a foot over there, and it's like, well, you know, oh god, his head over there. Thanks for sure. what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about, and um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah, but um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log, and someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt, and what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of, people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing some Well, this, no, this was it? the thing, is you can phone in, but the best one, I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's some great ones. The, the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was, what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, Which but there's lots of that. There's things like, Esther was superb. <laughs> yeah. Woman call yeah. one. Woman called. There yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that are. Yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up for Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought it was even I brilliant. Right, I but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remembered that Carl. information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Can I, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What, what, what was the significance of that last date? Why did he? What, what was the was that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. Which I'm interested in. So this. Yeah. This will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> It might, it might not be covered in the Hitler, um, biography, the Anderson Shelter, but, Just I mean, check if there's a special Anderson, uh, <laughs> chapter. Anderson <laughs> Shelter chapter. Well, I'll look forward to this. Yeah, be, yeah. Be interesting. Uh, Powdered Egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're gonna play a hip-hop. Yeah, we're gonna, it's time for a hip-hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World, is that yep. all? The Whole World? Anyway, this is a track, uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one, it's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. From their greatest hits album, uh, that's Outcast, and a track called Rosa Parks. Like it, like it. Yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Now, we just had a call, uh, from someone, uh, impressed by Carl, and Carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a PhD on Che Guevara. 
So in theory, whatever subject he chose, in theory, he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field. Now, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, what's your name? My name's David. David, now, you, now where did you do your PhD? Did at UCL. Did at UCL, mild, mild college. Yeah. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? I his, thought he his... did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although you <laughs> presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, you know, vaguely uh, intelligent, and then say, "Did you know about baby's eyes don't grow?" Um, any uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts? Anything he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well, and uh, I, I think I think he should be congratulated. What? No, because because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, "Why does anyone care about history? Why is it important?" What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think like why Rage Against the Machine have him on, on their T-shirts. Good point, oh. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I, th I don't know. Maybe that's. That was the design of the T-shirt. Maybe they wanted another T-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald any, McDonald. But didn't have any in. <laughs> sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there. Then. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Um, that, just to, before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know... Well, hopefully one busy. day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. Do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. I have an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, bye. Right. That's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, you they had to be in the same room. They were really. just saying, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but me, Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not, 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 not Matty Matthews. Said, not not Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never used to call be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That what she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer. She said that to me, mum and dad, on, really? on a parents' evening. <laughs> What is and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. April comes, she will. Simon and Garfunkel. That was in the days when they kept songs short. Short and sweet. sweet. What do you think of that, Carl? As a yeah, track. yeah, it was good. Yeah, you like that, yeah, do you? It's a good one, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, that, that's, um, that's Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Introduced. Boy. Coming up on the show, we've got Educating Ricky. I'm not happy with this. Oh, really? Because the, the last few weeks have been genius. <laughs> what, is, what is the drop in quality is there of the education of me? <laughs> well, it's, it's just, like I said, I've wasted a lot of time this week searching on the web, right? Um, you waste a lot of time searching on the web because you come up with things that aren't true. Why don't you look in books and verified sort of like journals? The web is the new book though, isn't it? No. It the is, web the is the new book. <laughs> That's what you got wrong. Yeah. Well, so I've been searching as hardly anything. I spoke to you in the week. Um, yeah. About Monday or Tuesday. This what did you say? There's nothing happened this week in the world. There's nothing from... going on. There was a new car wash that you can put dogs in. <laughs> there was a car wash you can put <laughs> dogs in. That's the only thing that's happened in the world. <laughs> and that and the jellyfish. <laughs> and we've covered that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, yeah, we're, we've, I've managed to find some bits, but it's not that good. Um, okay. Rockbusters. Yeah. Oh, we've really, really G'd up. So that's coming up. The thing that's not that good. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Can you just quickly tell us about the car wash with the dog in it? Well, that, I don't know what's that didn't make the top I three. I didn't, I didn't waste that much time on it, to be honest. What did it, just say? Said, it just said, um, you know, how busy are you? Uh, have you got a dog? Um, <coughs> how about saving some time? There's some car wash out. Um, but it's, it's not a car wash, it's dog wash. Um, you take it down there, put your coin in, put your dog in, and it comes out clean. See, there's nothing in is it. This, is this called a bath, isn't it? No, but it's like a machine. Right. There's a machine. But, but we'll look, you know, that's why I didn't pick it. <laughs> 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 so we've got, we've got some oh. coming up. Uh, Rockbusters. Yeah. Um, 
Rick, can I just, uh, <laughs> can I just explain some of the prizes we've got here yeah, for Rob Busters? Because I just want you to try and picture, if you would, the kind of XFM listener <laughs> who'd particularly want this I've collection, this collection of, 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 of gifts. <laughs> you've got the, um, the best chill out album ever. This is yeah. the one, as I said before, that's largely made up of songs you may have heard in adverts. Sure. So sure. you've got the, um, the Volvo advert on there. Yeah, and even the T-Mobile TV. T-Mobile. Brilliant. That's on there. So, um, that's a Roy Good. So look forward to that. Um, yeah, again, just just imagine which XFM listener is particularly looking forward to Top of the Morning with Terry Wogan, <laughs> his uh, two disc set. There, you got uh, uh, it starts with um, <coughs> we've got the Bangles on there. We've got Billy Joel, River of Dreams, uh, Shine On by Mr. Christopher. So, um, so yeah, good. just look forward to that. Uh, <coughs> oh dear, we got the uh, Only Fools and Horses last year's Christmas special. We we gave one of those away last year, uh, yeah. last week, but uh, still more to uh, shift. Is the, is the, do I spy and a little free? Yes, it's car. a little free three wheel trotter. Independent trading uh, oh. three wheel cars, so that's there as well. So, um, as I say, if you if you if you like fairly uh, and mediocre little, comedy, little, 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 little Jonathan Ross's face there yeah, on the back, God, oh. and uh, maybe you also want uh, Jerry Halliwell's Body Yoga DVD, Rick. So, sure, well, that is yeah, well, well, that's good quality. And then just a few token uh, XFM kind of things. We've got uh, the Manic Street Preachers DVD and uh, the U2 best And uh, tell me, Steve, how do uh, the lucky win uh, listeners win these? Rick, I'm glad you've asked. What they do is they email in with the answers to Rockbusters, which is a quiz. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. How do they email if we don't know the email address? Rick, again, thanks for asking. Thanks for flagging that up. Um, ricky.gervais mm. at xfm.co.uk. That'll be coming up shortly. Um, th try and get into the mindset of Carl Pilkington. A lot of yeah. people have been trying to emailing answers, trying to think through kind of logically, sure. or maybe based on the rules that they've picked up over the or years. Or when he says it in a cryptic clue, they believed him. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you've just got to think more like <laughs> a mentalist right. to try and get win. First of all, right, the prize is that I source every week. Explain yourself. Um, what I said to you we're doing between now and Christmas, because this is just a few weeks till Christmas. Right. I thought I'd make up sort of family packs. Okay. That, mm -hmm. um, the winner can have something, say like, um, there's a nice U2 album in there, right, yep. so the winner might want to keep that, but they can get rid of the Jerry yoga thing. They can give Only Falls Nurses to Uncle. To the dad. To the right. dad, yeah. The the ma the, I think the mum would love the Terry Wogan. Yeah. The thing. yoga for the, your sister. Right. Yeah. And all that. So is that, is that, that's, that's what you, you thought through, was it, or, or was it that there was a load of junk in the office? Did, or did you, you scoop them up with two arms and it's as much as you could carry down the corridor? Yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah. But, yeah. but okay. that's, that's me, uh, that's me workings on why you've got all that. Okay. Brilliant. That's well, excellent. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Um, that, that's coming up. Um, well, well, me, and me, me mum sent some more. What we also needed there is he's, he's got a little, he's got a letter from his mum. My mum did some more rockbusters for us. I reckon, I, the, I reckon they're secretly listening, Carl. They've said they're not listening, but I reckon they are. Does wow. that worry you? Well, let's play a record and let's hear, uh, let's hear your mum's rockbusters. Better warranty. Oh. oh. Well done. Regulators. I hope Nate's involved. Nate Dogs? Yeah. I hope so. I hope too. But you can't be in Nirvana. You know you're right on XFM 104.9. I had to, uh, meet the, uh, doctor for the, for this fight thing, uh, in the week. And, uh, uh, it's the one who's off, um, um, Big Brother. It's not psychiatrist. Like, yeah. And, um, but she's a medical doctor and she's sort of, um, uh, uh, big in the, in the boxing sort of world as well. And, um, one of the tests, I had to do a punch test, the other test I had to do was to get in the bod pod. You really? Know, the same as, as Fat Swallow? Yeah, yeah. And, and he it, wiped it down since he was yeah, <laughs> yeah, And, uh, I was a little bit nervous and, uh, So I what does this do? What exactly does it do? The what it does, it, 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 uh, it do a, um, uh, a displacement sort of calibration with a, a known volume. All right. Just bear in mind that Carl's listening, so if you want okay. to explain that in. What it does, Carl, is it works out your density. Okay, right, again, through, okay. Through, through, through displacement, it knows how much your, what your volume is for the air displaced, right, in this, in this thing. And, um... In layman's terms, what does it tell you? Uh, would it, would it, it, it tells you, well, it, it know, well, it knows, it knows what m muscle weighs, it knows what fat weighs, it knows your average density of your, your, your skeleton, um, what height you are there. So it works out from your volume and your density, um, it can work out, therefore, probably what percentage of that is muscle, fat, bone, what, etc. What, um, what if you put in one of those, um... Oh, God. <laughs> no, go on then. No, go on, what were you gonna ask? What, Just what? think of what would he do if you put in one of those pug dogs? One of those what? Those what do you mean? What would it do? What, like on Ricky's lap? <laughs> no. Or what do, you, do you know those dogs that are all wrinkling? have got too much skin for the skeleton. Yeah. You know, it's all yeah. like caving in and folding over. Yeah. Would the machine go? Well, we know what you are, so it's all right. Or would it say, "Oh, what's going okay, on here?" Compute, yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Like last week when you were laughing why do you at me want about- a, Why do you want to confuse machines? Do you remember when he put in Y to a computer search engine to try and confuse it? I love the fact I want the I want the computer to come back. Why not? And your head explode. I mean, I love the idea that you're trying to. What? What? I mean, it. it, It's better than what I thought you were going to say, which is, what if you put a fly in there? (laughs) Well, I'm worried about that. They don't get a fly in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But anyway. So anyway, what percentage of you is muscle, and what percentage of you is fat? Um, I'm. uh, I'm twenty five percent fat. Twenty five percent fat. Yeah. Now, what's written? And most like and most of me is muscle. Um, we could bone density in that. Rick Waller was 60% fat, which I've looked into it and apparently is exactly the same as a pork scratching. Wow, that's extraordinary. So he is, he is yeah. the qu- equivalent of a 30 the living, stone yeah, pork, a giant pork scratching. scratching. Yeah. So, um, so is 20% fat, is that good or bad? No, 20% is alright, 25 is over. Right. I, I, um, uh, men, healthy, Fit, lean men, um, uh, about eight, 18, 20. Um, right, I'm 25. So you're a healthy, fit, no, lean man? No, no, 18, 20, I'm 25. Oh, you're 25? Yeah, right, yeah, right. so I'm, I'm 5%, yeah. um, over. And a boxer, uh-huh. a boxer that, that is in peak, you know, with the, uh, basically, you, you've seen the ones, they just look, you know, like Bruce Lee. Yeah. They're 8%, 8% fat. Well. So, uh, is that I mean, good for you? Um, well, I don't think it's that bad for you. I mean, you know, you, you need a bit of fat. Because did Bruce, Bruce, like, Bruce Lee supposedly, uh, I mean, there's sort of many rumours, I'm sure you're fascinated by them, Carl, conspiracy theories surrounding Bruce Lee's death. Yeah. One of which is that he, his body was it's at the peak of physical perfection. He had an aspirin because of a headache, and it reacted with his, because yeah. uh, just the impurities in the aspirin killed him. Yeah. Yeah, you're I nodding. Uh, yeah, because uh, it, it's sort of like quite interesting and a bit weird. Yeah. He'll have yes, that. that's a fact. He'll have, yeah. Well, are you aware of the fact that supposedly he actually cheated death, he actually faked his own death so he could work undercover for the Hong Kong police. Are you aware of that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you believe that as well? Not so, sh- not so convinced. I don't know. Do you believe he could kill a man by putting all his energy into a trembling hand and touching him and every blood vessel burst? Well, it's just uh, another form of trickery, isn't it? I mean, you met up with, uh, <laughs> with Darren, didn't you? Old, uh, met up with Darren Brown, yeah. Darren Brown. Yeah, he's yeah. incredible. Yeah, he's probably the Britain's best illusionist, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah. yeah. You can put that on the poster if you want. I'll tell you yeah. what, though. <laughs> right. Changing the subject a bit. Go we were on. talking about a fly getting in that pod. Yeah. yeah. Um, read in the week when I was searching for stuff to educate, you know, the educate Ricky section. Yeah. Which we will be. Do you want to answer that phone? Because it's annoying me. <sighs> who's phoning? I don't I'm know. The, it's obviously someone who doesn't know that you're talking at the moment, so leave it. It could be, it could be, um, leave uh, it. It could be the head Just of. Leave it. Yeah, go on. Could be um, the head of XFM. Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. I don't no, think no, he's no. Awards, we must no, I won't embarrass him. I'm going, don't call me when I'm working. Nice. Right. Yeah. The machine. Yeah. Yeah. Raging against the machine. So anyway, yeah, right. We're talking about flies yeah. getting in a pod. And do you know, like, how, um, a Barbie doll, if it was real, it wouldn't be able to work. Do you know what I mean? A Barbie doll, if a woman had the proportions. Yeah, she wouldn't be able to tie her shoelaces up and stuff because right. her, her legs are too long for her back and all that. Flies, scientists can't work out how they fly. It's a bee. It's a bee. It's a bee, not a fly. No, a fly as well. No. A fly is, it, apparently its body is like too big for its wings yeah. and um, they still can't work it out. Yeah. How, how which, which, which in yeah. your mind says what? Something spooky they, 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 they have worked out that they, they, it's, it's the fact that what they do, the, the the wing actually beats a ridiculous about 150 times a second, so it displaces air. Yeah. yeah. So, so they have. I know what you it. mean. I know what you mean. It's it's incredible that it can fly because it's got such small wings. Yeah. All right. And it's okay. a bee, not a fly. So, yeah. But other than that, good point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that a laughs> Bowie. Ah, <laughs> uh, another classic. Be my wife of the Low album, David Bowie. Well, nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm. I'm, I'm just. I'm just saying that is nature. Oh now and again, God. you'll get. You'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he? <laughs> <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and. Oh. Why? Why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I. I was. I think that's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it, I didn't do anything with it, and it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair, and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense, absolute well, nonsense. What are you Don't saying? Absolute nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it?
and that's what happens with old people once they lose their, you know, will to live. Once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo. What's it doing? Can't fly. Its wings are useless. Eat it. Tastes horrible. Kill it. <laughs> no, they did nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I think I think they over farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're It'd making this up again. Eaten. All conjecture. No, but they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, it's not for me, that. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea, you don't you're just making this. it up. What's this based on, I've that just... people, and also, why would that kid it out? Because, I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? And it sounds harsh. Once again, no got use... his information from a glacier mint no, advert. No, it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's gonna make them stronger. <laughs> What would you do for your doctor? And I came to him and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't... I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm gonna get rid of. I want... I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that, everyone knows that, it's just the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them. They're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> what, it's not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> even he had a leaf on. No, well, listen, <laughs> So... Are you thinking fundamentally then that aesthetically the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than uh, yeah, and and that's that's the thing, isn't it? With with modern technology, you need you know the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah, otherwise the satoli cells die, which sort of feed to semen and all that so they, they you know to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile they have to be outside which is annoying because i'd put a little rib cage around them like that i'd, I'd pop a rib cage around those protect them wear a cricket box have that built in so you cannot get a kick in a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick but it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away right. yeah. so that they were just then you dropped them it's like right we need to cool them down be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on a aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, landing gear down, and the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they a... could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. Cool yeah. Down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Go on. You say easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just. Uh... How do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but. Testosterone, eh? <laughs> Testosterone? <laughs> Toblerone. I want to, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits. Mm. Like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Supposing I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them, I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my arse where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easy to move the head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been around, haven't they, so they've been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking of it? We we're just chatting about um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them Yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got, this year? 
no, no, years ago, years ago, like years ago, when I loved him, I said I loved Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. yeah. He met one of his mates. You didn't nick him from the sweet shop. No, no, no. That's no, he knew some yeah. mate who uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And uh, he must have got about he, he must have got about thirty crates of Tic Tacs. Thirty crates. Honestly, of honestly, mm. we'd have about twenty four on each crate. We got them stuck them in a cupboard under the uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you're oh, lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just... Well, just, just this, sorry, whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah. about. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the great I've already run out of sorry, responses. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no that. Opinion, I mean, I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this anecdote is, other than a yeah. bloke... Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, mate. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the country in place. Oh, do you want some more? No, of course we fucking don't. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause we will for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load. I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, oh, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. <laughs> yeah, so I got rid of them <laughs> like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shot of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one. Ting its way up the tube. <laughs> it's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding tong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like that or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be back up, tinging it up. Sheila's getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell That's of a hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I your mum uh, regravelled the drive, yes, yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident! Let's never speak of the Tic Tac incident. <laughs> I just imagine the clock ticking there. It's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, good I was track. worried that it's a bit novelty it would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, really it's not bad at all. On I... XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Mays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week. I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details. But what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't know <laughs> why. No, if I only came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. 
<laughs> there was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? And I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. It's fine, he was well, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more disgusting. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's why I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hear the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not going to go. And I go, <laughs> okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like go, is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because, um, because he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And then, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about 80, 81? Right, and he joined back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was in the older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me, mum, saying, uh, you know, what a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote, <laughs> What bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, Dear Dad, yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sh sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what her? do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, it's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertained in this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean the sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, so, maybe they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! I love it though. Oh, we're going over the top. Built no, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. yeah. Is this is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in you order. Did, no, you, because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. You didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're, you're going to have to do, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no, obviously. But were the, the other army, soldiers going around just going, wah? <laughs> Bilkington. <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't yeah. believe that, Carl, you've Honest made that Honest to up. God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going, let him up, and goes, oh God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. Does, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> 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 no, let him off Marshall this time. Him. Can he... T yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either. How did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their he's, back. He's yeah. really weird. It's like back then he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, hasn't I, got the I'm house. seriously, I'm seeing for about eleven or twelve years. Oh, so I so it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him for <laughs> his misery. Can we take Carl to the uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down? Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs>
Hyde's main offender, XFM 104.9. Wow. It's that time in the show where I test Carl on his, uh... Homework. Yeah, for the week. History. The re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this, went shopping on Sunday, buy some new jeans. I was in a shop, saw an old lad who I hadn't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright mate, how are you doing? First thing he said, sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, <laughs> God. Just, had he listened to the show or someone had yeah, just told yeah, him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was a yeah. listener. First thing he said, wow. so sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, you yeah, right, right. You, do you want to talk about it or? God. I know. Well, well, you did take it pretty badly for a 29-year-old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that. I it wasn't a shock. You no, knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know... But you weren't, you didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, but didn't yes she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have a knee this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today. Exactly. Which was good. Yeah. Mm. Teenage fan club. Oh, they're a good band, They are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD... Graduate there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something, or Newcastle. Right. Working. So she won't know what the your greatest triumph. She she saw last week's and you got an E in history, and now this week you cut you come through yeah. with some great praise that Miss, Mrs. Matthews never, you know, laid upon Even you. Even looked she? at. No. Uh, no. Just said you won't be a high flyer. Hey. You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who, um, <laughs> like you know, my mate. Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkin's making music, yeah. Pilkin's making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do yeah, a certain amount of planning. You can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags. <laughs> yeah. Never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and know? that 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 woman uh, who you picked up in your black car, she's in a circus now, and yeah, she can happy. fly. Which is good. Oh, I confusing that with a film. You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the um, Monsters Inc. Oh did yeah. Did you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Because about well, the history thing took over last weekend. To be honest, when you found out my results, <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did you say? Yeah, you brought it on yourself. You know, why didn't you take it serious? You know. Was she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, "You can learn. Look, you, you learn Rasputin." Mm. You know, if only you did You've that. You've done that. School, that. You've done Rasputin. You know what I mean? She said you can do it if if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Ricky's told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she, she think said, we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Uh, nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you did you tell your uh, parents about your? No. Nope. No. Never. Because they they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that you know I didn't get any. No. What? How did they do at school? I didn't have them back then, did they? Right. Uh, <laughs> when was that, Carl? The Middle, middle ages. ages. I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that, was it? It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right? He can like put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? He's, he's done that first of all. Right. So, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say. You know, this isn't working. What should I do? Mm. And he'll say like. Is that you know, not brain surgeon? He'll yeah. Say, oh, Fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters Inc? What yeah. do you make of it? Um, it's so, alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoys Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away? <laughs> <laughs> was it the songs? Was it the animation? Yeah, the fluffy was little it, things yeah. that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because like there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, do they? No. You know what I mean? They're messing around. I don't know why they make kids films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming, making noise training. around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> what a great review that would <laughs> really? be! Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going, well, I don't want to give it away, wait until it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away, it's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? Are you going to go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now, because me missus is away. I'll probably, uh, 
get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh, right, okay. I thought you might like that. And if like you can get, so, I mean, if I can get you tickets, say, in the stalls or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on, it's on ice. I think it's the final year, it, isn't it's it? It's lovely, it's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah. And it's a musical as well. They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It is well it's, it's, it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. He played the Elephant Man. So it's all comes, the universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that? Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I've, I've I think they've got a real guy with actual, with elephantitis. Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from uh, the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure, and it's the beautiful catch. Goodbye. See you, See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye. Incisive <laughs> investigative journalism there. I like the fact that you've learned a lot from Parkinson, even stealing some of his questions, like, are you on crack? Which yeah, he always yeah. asks his guests. Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that when she went, I don't know, I have the occasion to wait, well, that's all right for you. Good for you out. <laughs> that was great. It was brilliant. Although that is I the feel... best interview technique I've ever heard anywhere. I feel like there's still some questions unanswered. Yeah, it hasn't proved it to me, I'll be honest, <laughs> no, Carl. It hasn't proved me the existence of, of ghosts I have to and say, Paul, though, I was, I was worried as soon as she got involved with the Ouija board. I yeah, 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 I was yeah, thinking, please yeah, do not get yeah, involved with that Ouija yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was worried when said I heard some giggling from coming from the other stable. Yeah. Don't yeah. go over there. <laughs> yeah. Don't go over there. It's, uh, what uh, questions did she ask the Ouija board? You didn't ask her that, I know. She didn't, she didn't want to. She didn't want to say. No. Okay. Do you think it was something like why that you did to try and confuse the computer mm. and the spirit world got mm. really annoyed and they yeah. got confused and they came back and started messing up her clothes. <laughs> but what, what do you think then? There's, there's what do you mean? What well, do you mean what do I think? What do you think? What, you know what, 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 what about what? what there's, there's nothing I can answer there. There's nothing I can answer. Alright, she said... Well, she I just keep saying I don't believe in the existence of ghosts because of the impossibility. Right. Now, when she said, I mean, the interview I did for 50 minutes. You did for how long? Fifty minutes. Fifty. Five thought, minutes. Yeah, we might use that at Christmas or something, right? <laughs> um, but the thing is, well, that's right? the best you got out of fifty minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no be <laughs> MTV are not going to call again. I tell you what, right? It did get a bit dark, and uh, I didn't want, I didn't want that sort of stuff going out. Right? Yeah. But um, I can, I can understand the heating thing. I said, well, you know, in the full interview, I was saying, you know, that could, that could be anything, could it? Heating broke or something. Mm. Mm. Now, she said the the uh, what else was she talking about? Someone got into the bed next to her. Yeah, I mean, I sort of said, well, um, you know, how did that happen? Yeah, and she couldn't explain it herself, but sure, I said, sure. but, but it did wake you up. Maybe you're mm. a little bit sort of oh, but yeah. still although the only explanation I can think of, if she didn't actually see anyone, is what well, it was a ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that she's was my... probably got a ghost. But, getting what, in but what about Come cupboards on. opening and shutting? See, that's. That... Again, the only explanation for that is a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't think of anything else. Play a record. It's gotta be a ghost. Yeah, it is a ghost. I think you've proven it to us. Yeah. A spirit. Yeah. Street spirit? Yeah. Nice. What yeah. Street spirit. Radiohead. So, turns out ghosts do exist <laughs> yeah. after all, Steve. A woman what Carl knows proved it. I've got egg on my face. Yep. On XFM. Well, Instantly, Rick, I should just encourage you and everyone else listening. Oh, really, I've got egg on my face, is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, I've been eating an omelette. <laughs> James Randi, a yeah. hero of yours and a hero yeah. of mine, yeah. he's on TV this week on Horizon, I think it's maybe Thursday, check press for details, trying to expose the nonsense that is homeopathy. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. So, uh, I look forward to that. Do you know what that is, Carl? No, go on. Um, I've got a theory that um, if you say say you got something uh, 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 an essential oil or something or uh, uh, in a solution, uh, one in ten solution, and it does something to you, actually does something to you, um, they've got this thing where they dilute it, and dilute it to so there's nothing in it, but because they're using the same water, and the the the, the dilute the water still has the same effect. It's sort of like it's sort of like a placebo that you know works. You know, if that's the sort of theory of it. Mm -hmm. What time's that on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I check the papers, but I think it's uh, sort of nine o'clock Thursday, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting, though, Carl. It will be interesting, mate. Trust me. I'll tell you what's also interesting, Rick. The prizes we're giving away this Go week on, on uh, Rockbusters. We got for you uh, David Attenborough's The Life of Mammals. I don't know, is this a new show? Is this on TV at the moment? Is this like yeah. a new thing? Uh, so that looks good, like a, a double VHS thing there. Um, we've also got a U2, the best of their um, 90s videos, uh, even better than the real things on there. Mysterious Ways, Beautiful Day, Electrical Storm, the new one. Stuff on there, that's on the video. Uh, we've also got a couple of CDs, The Smashing Pumpkins. I think this is sort of alternative versions of a lot of their hits and stuff, live yeah, versions live stuff and, and stuff like this. Johnny Cash is 
current album, possibly his last. Uh, we don't know because apparently he's, he's not very well at the moment. That's uh, an uh, album of covers. Yeah, well, not all covers. Some of his new stuff as oh, well. But he's done uh, covers of things like "Personal Jesus" by Depeche Mode, and mm. "Desperado," um, and "Bridge Over Troubled Water." And the great thing about Cash is I read an amazing review where it says it's like he always makes them his own. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can't even remember the old version. Well, "Desperado" years, by the Eagles. By the Eagles, yeah. Oh, could I, I'd like to play that. Just yeah, well, that because uh, I haven't heard that. We'll play we that and then it. give it away. These are actually good prizes. These are good prizes. We've also got, um, uh, if we're including a small uh, miniature three-wheel car, uh, an Only Fools and Horses video. Mm. I think this is the uh, special that was on Christmas TV last year. So if you're one of the uh, the people who didn't see it, I mean, wasn't it like 22 million people yeah, watching? Ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. If you're one of the people who you know desperately wants to see it again, I know I do. And, and, <laughs> and, and, um, and, and wants a small yellow car. And small also wants a small in. car. Then, uh, then there it is. And uh, also another of these um, compilations, arbitrary compilation albums, the best chill out album ever, Rick. Sure. Um, if you're a fan of the Levi's Freedom ad, I love the <laughs> Levi's Freedom ad. Then uh, the track that I hate the music to it though. No, 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 well that's a shame because it's, <laughs> it's, it's included <laughs> on here. <laughs> Rick, how much do you love the Volvo TV ever? Love it, love it. Because that hate uh, the music again though. Why? That's a shame because oh, that's, is it, that oh, track is also music? Oh, okay, sure, sure. But there's also sure. stuff on here. There's some interesting stuff. There's Pink Floyd. Sure. There's Coldplay. There's Roy Scott. So um, you know, it's probably worth. I it. love Pink Floyd. Except the music again. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a bind for me. That's a whole heap of treats. And, there, that, and, and the, that's the winner of Rockbusters. The winner of Rockbusters. Coming up after the adverts. Okay. Doves caught by the river on XFM 104.9. We're into the second hour now. This is when this award winning show really kicks into gear. The when last you say award winning? Uh, we, haven't, we haven't won them yet. I mean, it, uh, it, we will win some. Hang on, let me remind you. Uh, there are bronze in the Sony Awards. Oh, yeah, we got bronze. We got I don't bronze. go for bronze. I it doesn't count. Count. Okay, no. no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Um, uh, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant. And Carl Pilkington, which is uh, what Heat write about, really. Uh, Carl's the main man. Think of Carl, a year ago, he was just sitting in that room going, all right, all right, I've done this. <laughs> XFM. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a music bed. Brilliant. Comes on the show, we start taking the piss out of him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People start going, oh, who's the, who's the idiot you've got in? We go, it's Carl. And they yeah. go, we like him. He's a, he's a fool. I go, yes, he's a fool. He's a pet <laughs> buffoon. And they go, we'll let him speak more. Right? And they're going, don't let him talk, don't let him talk XFM, the, the fat cats. Oh. And I said, I'm a rebel and I'll do it my way. Rick, can I ask, did you stick it to the man? Yeah, I yeah, it was my... yeah. And then MTV call up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Heat are writing about him every week. Yeah, he's just been doing film for the BBC. There's some rumours he might be the new James Bond. Is it? Yeah, yeah. He's got he's, he's got is he in lovely McVitie's original digestives? Are we allowed to? Can I? If McVitie's are listening, I love these biscuits. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And uh, and he's got the best. <laughs> if the spearmint right now, strip clubs are listening. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> right. And he's got rockbusters to come. Yes, Let's do it. I should just ask, the, the few people have asked me this, uh, and there's also an email here from Rich, people are saying they've seen some of the posters and the adverts of uh, advertising the show, plugging the show, why isn't your, why aren't you on the posters, Carl? And it is your choice, isn't it? We did ask uh, Carl to be involved. But well, he, he is actually, it's like, like to do where's it? Waldo, he's actually, <laughs> he's, 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 he's in my trousers. <laughs> 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 Carl, you don't like having your photo taken, do you? You don't want, you don't, you don't, you're not seeking the publicity. No. I reckon you good are good secretly. Good I don't believe you. No, are. he's right. He's totally right. He's doing it just right. But I think there's a, there's a fine line to be drawn that you know if, if you like being in you know around radio, you've got a, and you, you want your own show or, or you enjoy talking and they just happen to be filming you for MTV. That's different. I think what you just avoid is going to silly celebrity bashes, having a picture taken for the sake of it. I mean, I think you're right, but. I think you should do the screen test. On a serious note, I think you should do the screen test. Just because it might be fun, and if it's no good, they won't do it. And you can stop any time you want. You no one has I'm, to keep going I'm on telly. I just think we're going to lose him. No, no, we won't lose him. Listen, right? I'll always be part of this. <laughs> I'm just worried that you're gonna get, you're gonna exhaust yourself, you're gonna be drained, you're gonna have told all your anecdotes hey, on He certainly will have, uh, if you have to help the old fella upstairs with the <laughs> yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fifty pounds an hour. Oh. That's well, terrible. Go on. But, so, but I'm, I'm, what I wanted to do, right, because I don't want to embarrass myself, right? Mm. I don't want to embarrass the woman at MTV when I turn up and she thinks, oh, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> what a waste of film this is going to be, because it's not cheap. I know sure. that. It's not a film either, but go on. Well, it, won't, it is cheap. It is cheap. They're, they're, they're filming on a DV camera that they can go over. Uh, if it's no good, they won't show it to anyone. It'll be great. It, they, it's just what they want you. Honestly, I can just see you doing little things, just like popping up, you know, between the records and going, all right. Uh, MTV, uh, music television, hear uh, about the airy Chinese kids born, which is weird, isn't it? Because they're not usually airy. And it just goes, <laughs> MTV. It'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant, Carl. 
Mm -hmm. If I, I'll come down with you, I'll come down with you. Well, we'll see. We'll, Go on. We'll think about it, right? Go on. Um. Right, Rockbusters. So, Rockbusters, um, we, you know, it's a little clue, some initials, three different clues. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, you can win the, the load of stuff that we've got. So, um, first one, um, here's a clue. Stop throwing that fruit about. Oh. Oh. Yeah. What's the initial? That's C B. C B. C B. Stop throwing that fruit about. Yeah. All right. Is Anders listening? Has he emailed us in yet? Anders, not had a, not had any response from Anders. I'll keep uh, keeping. I hope he hasn't stopped listening. Because right. he doesn't like the show. He's gone off. I hope he hasn't gone off the show. <laughs> so uh, the second one, um, that Scottish fella has made an error. That Scottish fella has made an error. Yeah, that's interesting. That's M. M. Right. right. That Scottish fella has made an error. Right. Okay. And, uh, the last one, uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with them. <laughs> you can make a right load of toast with them? Yeah. All right, what's the that's, that's G. G, I was thinking it might be bread for a minute, but no. Uh, G. So, uh, so just very quickly, stop throwing that fruit about, CD. <laughs> I've got, I've got the last one. Right. Scottish it fella. It doesn't work, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Well. That Scottish fella's made an error, that's M, and, uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with M, that's G. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can... We've got the CDs, we've got horses, we've got mammals on VHS, we got U2, uh, we got a couple of CDs including Johnny Cash. That's from his new album, uh, which is a collection of new songs and covers, which is one of the prizes given away on this week's Rockbusters. And, uh, can we have the clues and the answers and the winners? Yeah. Um, first one was Stop Throwing That Fruit About. Stop throwing that fruit about. The that answer is C B. That was Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course it is. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, the one that you've worked out, I'll do next. The yeah. uh, God, you make a load of toast with them. That Gorillas. was G. Gorillas. Gorillas, though, isn't it? Gorillas. Um, and the middle one was that Scottish fellas made an error. That was Mystique. <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> So. <laughs> oh. Did anyone get that? Extraordinarily, almost all the people who emailed in. I'm really, I'm going to think it's us then, it's because uh, I, I was thinking mistake. I was thinking muck error yeah. and muck mistake and but mistake. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you want to pick a winner? Yeah, I was going to give it, the, the prizes to uh, Amy Massey, who's uh, from Wiltshire, the West Country. <laughs> Losers down there, probably as weird as you. Yeah. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke. He had. Um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that all he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So, she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it, he's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. What? No, it's some. I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't are you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. Meat. So it's actually sitting there and throwing. Why? I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I go. <coughs> there you go. With that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Um, uh, <coughs> he choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen to your story. To you. it's, it's all. There's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio Three competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> They come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> Congo! <laughs> Get out, you're such a 
Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. That's a hell of a phone call Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? Um, I don't know because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders like wouldn't wouldn't be good but but they sort of do they do something there's something about if you did get rid of them all it would have an effect well of course it would any get rid of anything it would have an effect mm, not not everything though <laughs> like i've said you know jellyfish and what have you well it, no it's it's 97 percent water or something yeah so how much are they doing just g give them another three percent make them water <laughs> and that's, that's, that's more useful <laughs> Give them another three percent and make them water. <laughs> oh God! Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the? Who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little. Electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all like it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean you went to visit him? He went down here? What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. He just, just said, oh, come, come round to his. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, underground? He, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't shock me. That's to- that's He's spent to far too long with him if that- now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I- I'd be surprised if I walked round where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum- what did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole <laughs> it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. Watch the film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Ask Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a, a buffoon going, I'm just gonna sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point <laughs> of that? Yeah. Do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitle film and go, right, everybody, let's all do the Congo. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was around at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are bees. They love a drink. Um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? But some bees 
get uh, addicted in, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had the bees. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good idea. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had enough. Let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly, okay? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and, and as soon as someone tells me you're not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody's saying There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no one to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't do. Try and catch it out. Oh no, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. Couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's mainly sticking in, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. It, that, those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction, some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever, but at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen, change the colour of co concrete. Yeah. Whereas... Or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green. Right, stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> Dandy Warhols, get off on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello. It's five past two on the day that Carl, our producer, found out that he had an E in history, GCSE, and nothing else because he didn't actually register. I can't believe he registered for that. I don't know. I didn't. That's Someone it, else put you in. No, they, they, they can't have put you in because you were away. They probably said, oh, you know, they didn't, you didn't register in that. Listen, obviously, you're feeling a little bit melancholy because melancholy, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like you're hearing it for the first time, so it's like you're 16 again. But you, it was to be expected. But no, listen, I, I, it doesn't I, I, matter. It actually doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't. But listen, but listen, take it again. Take it again for your just, just is, there, is there a history teacher listening? Um, what's the number? 08700. 800, 1, 2, 3. They oh. can tell us the syllabus this year. 1, 2, 3, 4, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, what is it? 08700. And I did, I've got, I've got maths. Uh, uh 08700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. four. Mine's more laziness that I couldn't be able to say that last digit, yeah. Yeah. really. I've done the, the, yeah, the, the, most of the work. Yeah, let's not, let, if we get onto your problem, <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to be, it's a whole other show. It doesn't matter, really, because like you say, right, I've done all right for myself. Yeah. It's that, it's that old thing of like, um, when you get older, if you find out that your dad's not your dad, it's like, it doesn't matter, he was a dad to me. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So... Are you saying Mr. Nuttall wasn't your real teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Give out the number again, Rick, what are we after? 
Um, 0800-800-1234. Is no there a history teacher history. out there that may know how we can... Is he too late to register at this time? What's the syllabus this year? It? What's the syllabus this year? Do we have to pay for it? And does he want to earn, like, 25 quid cash in hand to give Carl a couple of lessons? I'll stump that up. Take it, yeah? Be great. Be fantastic. They probably won't want to do it, though. We'll film thing, it. It'll it? be a documentary on choice. <laughs> 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 Heat magazine be right behind it. There'd be, you know, little clues. We could have a little question and ask little quizzes. You know what I mean? Be Rick, great. before we play the next record, I've just been looking through the XFM gig guide, and I just wanted to let you know that, uh, at Spitz this evening, Commercial Street E1, doors at 8 o'clock, <laughs> Gut Bucket are playing. <laughs> So, no, just a lot of people, listeners will probably want to know that. So I don't want anyone to miss out on the Gut Bucket gig at Spitz tonight, coming to Street E1. <laughs> That's a good plug for the, uh, the Gut Bucket boys. Well, ladies um, and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Now, Steve just played one of the most beautiful records. I mean, that, uh, uh, so, uh, I've got up the ante here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play another Jimmy Webb track. I played it off Ten Easy Pieces, uh, last week, and I have played this track before, but a different version. You all know it, um, obviously better by Glenn Campbell. He wrote a lot of songs for Glenn Campbell. And this is Galveston, and this is absolutely beautiful. Jimmy Webb there and, uh, Galveston. See, and during that, Carl said, what's this about? Didn't ya? See, it's, th it's things you're interested in, you see? If only that, in you're that inquisitive when the Tudors and Stuarts came up, you'd have, you'd have a C or see, a B. You really do Stuarts. Didn't ya? It's just Tudors. Oh, they're the worst, aren't they? Stuarts, I've got a lot of time for, the Tudors can, you know what I mean? Listen, right. As you know, I, I lent Carl, part of his education, his historical <laughs> education, I lent Carl um, Gladiator, the movie on DVD, which he watched on his PlayStation 2, and uh, Rasputin. The Did you know last week when you gave me this, did you know my result for history? No. That's weird, isn't it? Yep. Now, uh, right, okay, it's the film review. Carl, you just, just tell it from the heart, tell us what you thought about the film, what you thought the... Can I just ask, is this the first time you'd seen Gladiator? You'd never seen it before? No. Okay. And what were your thoughts? Okay. The film of you. Gladiator. Um. It's all right. Noth nothing great. Uh. It's like it's like an old um sort of an old version of Rocky done in the olden days, really. Right. A bloke fighting other people. Sure. Um. How, how sort of well known is the story? Do you reckon people know the, the basics? Well, just very, very quickly, just do right, the plot. quickly. There's a guy called Max. Um, Maximus, yeah. Yeah. There's Caesar, and there's Caesar's kid, and uh, Max goes to war, sort of wins it, comes back. Uh, Caesar says, you're good at what you do. Me, I wish my son was as good as you. Uh, so I want you to be in charge when I die. His kid finds out. Bit annoyed about it, kills his dad because he don't want anyone to hear that he said that he wants him to be in charge. Yeah. So his kid gets in charge and thinks, "I'll show you. You're not going to be king. I am. You're going to be a slave or something." And then next thing you see is my, sorry. Can I just stop there? My only thought is the film's three hours long, so <laughs> maybe you should we, go through we, the whole plot. We, right? We've done the first ten minutes. But yeah. Go on. So yeah, he's a slave, and then. Yeah, but then that, that that was an interesting bit that I thought. Right. I mean, I was watching this with a girlfriend. She was already annoyed because she wanted to watch Friends on E4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, it was a good episode as well this week. Was it? Yeah. Don't tell her that. Okay. Right. So um. <sighs> so she so she was annoyed. And she said, "Come on, then, put it on." <laughs> and I got it wrong straight away because it says on the back 149. So I thought that was an hour and 49 minutes. It turned <laughs> out it was 149. No, I thought it was one hour 49. Yeah. But it was 149 minutes. Sure. So it it overran anyway. By 40 minutes. Yeah. So anyway, the interesting bit was where he was going across the desert on a horse, and I think to show you how long he'd been going across the desert on his horse, he's showing you a shot of the horse's knees and they were bleeding. <laughs> and I just wondered whether that's what horses do if they run for a long time. Can do you know? I don't. Good. Right. So anyway, so it goes on. Get, it keeps going on like this. Um, he's a slave, and then he has a fight at the end with the Caesar's kid, and he kills him. And that that's how it ended. Okay. Good. What did you think of it? Just generally, what what bits? What do you think was wrong with it? Right. Well, I've read up on it, and there's already a, a fact that is wrong. Right. Max, no, Caesar's kid, he didn't actually kill his dad, his dad died of a natural death. Right, in real life you in, mean? Yeah. 
Okay. And um, what's what's Caesar's kid's name? C comedian or something? Comedian. I think it's comedian. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the name comes from. The, the, when you, you know, a funny person is called a comedian. He didn't actually get killed in real life by Max. No. He died by his sister poisoning him, and um, and he didn't. Die no, no. Are no. you saying? Are you saying that this is not a historical document? It's it's oh, it's wrong. All over the place. Yeah. Well, well in next terms week, of well, next week I'm giving you Braveheart, and that is actually true. That is actually, that, that is that is factually no, accurate. I can't it is, it is. Them. It was a little Listen, Australian fella that helped him out. Just for people who watched it, you know on. that the the um uh, the the guy Caesar's kid. Yeah. He died. Uh, his sister tried to poison him. That didn't work. And apparently, he was a gay fella, <laughs> and his boyfriend, who was a wrestler, strangled him. That's well, where did you story. get this information? On the internet. I thought I'd look it up to see how much of it I actually got right. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I read. Okay, so, uh, out of ten? <sighs> Five. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's no good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it out. I want, it's annoying the way it says, like, you know, this film's got to be seen at the cinema, because I saw it at home, and I don't think I missed out on anything. Very good point. I think that's the, probably the point they're making, but yours is... Yours is valid too. We'll play a record and after that I'm going to ask you about Rasputin, the mad monk. Travis and Sing. I like that. That's all right. It's a bit, it's a bit easy. It's not their best. I like their earlier stuff a little bit better, you know. But what I don't like is them throwing around mollusks. I don't like it when that poor little octopus gets flung around. I know it's dead, but there's something, there's a certain lack of respect for the, for the mollusk, for the, mini. for the squid and yeah. octopi. If I came to your, when I used to go to Wales for my holidays, they mm. used to get washed up on the beach and people used to go over them on the motorbikes. <laughs> and they were ch cheering and stuff, and it's just like, do you, do you realise what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. sick, isn't it? But anyway, uh, Gladiator, just was going to add on the end of that, um, if you're into that sort of film, Jason and the Argonauts is probably a better bet. <laughs> is that factually a a accurate? Did you look that up a lot? Did, did, did skeletons actually come out of the ground and fight yeah. I don't know, but it's a more enjoyable film. Okay. It's okay. shorter. Bobby the Arab Strap, uh, Ben and Sebastian. Cutting next, Educating Ricky. <laughs> you too, Electrical Storm. Steve, am I mental or have we been playing some great tunes We've today? We've been playing some great tunes, you're not mental. You're Onyx a genius. FM. <laughs> yeah. Our next FM, wonderful, but now I'm looking at with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington in the chair now. The, um, oh, the talked about, the acclaimed, Educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't normally mm. listen, yeah. um, basically, I'm educating Ricky. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of research in a week, find stuff, news, history, anything that's interesting. Um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline, you take your pick. Yeah. Between now and three, you're going to learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are, um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've also got, uh, Hippopotter News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, chick can you believe it? <laughs> chick can you believe it? <laughs> well, well, I'm going to go with Hippopotter News. Hippopotter hey, News? Hippopotter yeah. News. Right, well, this one, it's, uh, I'm not going to take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on breakfast, right? Because it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't have to tell you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um... <laughs> oh, I think you did! Right, I know it... what it is! I know what this <laughs> okay, is! I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget, right, there's a circus, I'm loving it already. circus going on somewhere, I think it was in America. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking, like, in the last three weeks. Okay. Right? Uh, little midget. Uh, circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um, <laughs> Steve, you'll ask the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's not a circus, it's not this. Right. <laughs> good money to see it. So, everyone, everyone's clapping, and he's getting carried away. Um, 
Because <laughs> he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when, uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was, it was getting out of hand. <laughs> but he was jumping and he was coming down there all going, hi, yeah, and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right, just sat next to the trampoline, getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right, I thought he was in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hippo, getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the <laughs> he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because he's Why do they sit in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So anyway, right, so the hippo's there, uh, <laughs> he's getting annoyed, is he, because this, because the midget's he's eating going, into his toe. I follow oh, this, yeah. gonna, this thinking, is really yeah. annoying, they're gonna be, yeah. oh yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's thinking, <laughs> he's already done the trampoline, my pogo stick out, he's never gonna work. <laughs> yeah, go on, so there's a hippo waiting, uh, this, this, see, it's a Great story, and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down. The hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the crowd are going the mad. The midget's loving it. Can't believe his luck. Although we think, you think, he probably knows he's uh, dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying hi, hi, He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline. Goes really high, but goes off at a funny angle. Oh, hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies out. Hypotenuse! Hypotenuse! Sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Who oh, Hippo's there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> it's not rubbish though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo. Right? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on, going, "Come on!" The midget flew off at a hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what is I that? have to say though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippopotamus, I was thinking actually the way it happened. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it is it that 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. Everyone knows that midget trampoline it, Thomas. Are you mental? You're asking well, for trouble. Well, you, you know when he told me it. He said, and the midget. He didn't. He didn't mention the hippopotamus. <laughs> and he said, and the midget went on, like, and soon he fell off. And the hippo at him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you want to do? Aren't they, like, very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither claimed. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 no, 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 and it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't some sort of where Zippo was eating a midget, and it's it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely. I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, sorry. No, it's definitely. Fact, yeah, okay, it's definitely right, proof. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, um, uh, I'd like to play a, a classic Springsteen. We're all fans of Springsteen. There, this might be his debut album. I'm not sure. Greetings, Raspberry Pi. I think it is. Yeah. Um, New Joyzy. Um, and this is growing up. It's great. It's classic. Yeah. Sorry, it Springsteen and Growing Up off of uh, Asbury Park album. Mm. They're great. They make you feel good, Springsteen, oh, don't they? He's a joy. He's an absolute joy. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, this, what, this, what all, this is what they're all, they're all reading for. and writing about. Absolutely. Um, before you get the clues, let me just remind you of the prizes you're playing for. We've got the Manic Street Preacher's Greatest Hits on DVD. We've got the film Human Traffic on DVD. Uh, we've got the Best Air Guitar Album 2 uh, on CD. Uh, Groove Armadas, is this their current album? Yeah. I guess it's not selling very well. They're still trying to promote that. You can have that as well. If you are a fan of the Ford Fiesta TV ad, of the Vodafone TV adverts, you will love the, the You'll uh, love it. You didn't <laughs> think you liked Indy. Well, you do. <laughs> exactly. And that's got uh, Feeder and Travis and Daddy Drawn Boy and all sorts on there. Plus Plus, my own copy, six ninety nine. it cost me, uh, The Pelican Brief, starring Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. If you've not seen that, panned and scanned on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what right. the Do you well, know what a pelican, uh, I read the other day, that has okay. to turn its head upside down to eat. Give us the clues. <laughs> so, Rockbusters. Well, yeah. let me just explain. A, a bird, a bird has, has a gullet, an esophagus and a gullet is all in one thing. It hasn't got peristalsis, which is the movement that we have that can make food. Uh, okay, so a bird has to can only rely on gravity. Yeah. So it it has to 
have its head up and has to shake, it can't eat. That's you were going to say that, weren't you, Carl? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Rockbusters, um, you mentioned it earlier, one of last week's was, it's a cryptic clue and then some initials. I was in Texas, I fell in a puddle on my knees, knees got wet, uh, WH, wet knee Houston. Yeah. That's the sort of thing, thing we can Use of the with. word knee twice there <laughs> in the cryptic clue <laughs> and in the final And the word answer. wet, I think you're yeah, 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 which is wit. Right. So fine, good. So um, there's three of them. It's email only. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Sure. Load of stuff to win. Here to go. Right, the first one. I'm writing these down. Go on, making it up. Um, the fella has only got one badge left. <laughs> <laughs> the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. What are the initials? That's just E. Just E. Oh, just E. Just E. The okay. fella has only got one badge left. This is either a solo artist or a band. Yeah. Um, second one. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Say that again? The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Yeah. What's M the initial? M D. M D. M D. And finally, I really, uh, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. No, give, I think us that, give us that one again. I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. And that's. Right. M. Okay. I know, I've got that one. Right. Okay. That's great. It's great. That's lovely. So, uh, yeah. That's great. I think, I think the, the second and third one's quite easy. First one is a killer. Is it tricky? Yeah, it's a tricky one. So, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and what, we pick a winner out at about quarter to two or something Quarter like to two, that? yeah, absolutely. No, quarter to three, what am I talking about? Quarter to three. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. That's dynamite stuff. Well done, Carl. Excellent. More, uh, educating Ricky next. Yeah. So, the first one was... The fella's only got one badge left. I don't have no idea. The initial was E. Go on. Will I get out the answer now? Yeah, give the answer, yeah, I think on. you should. That was Elastica. <laughs> yeah? E Elastica. The band Elastica. Oh, I'm not it doesn't sure. work. No. It doesn't work. The word, the word sticker and the and the ba yeah. and a badge are not interchangeable. And it's not his last sticker. It's elastica. Yeah, but like his last sticker. So <laughs> someone's got it. Oh, um, so, so so say a different word and it works. <laughs> oh, so if the band is is elastica, then it works. <laughs> God, if only Justin would have named it different. If she'd have just gone, let's call it is elastica, <laughs> then we'd have yeah. Second one. Um, what was the clue? The unmarried lady is a friend to eat out with. Go on. That's Miss Dynamite. <laughs> Miss Dynamite. Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's been running for four weeks. We've done, we've done the obvious Doesn't ones. Doesn't work. Doesn't, Doesn't work. Miss Dynamite. Again, if she'd have called us out <laughs> Miss Dynamite, it would work. She didn't. <laughs> See, well, what, what's happening is pop stars are letting you down by naming <laughs> themselves incorrectly for your clues. Those don't work. They don't count. <laughs> and the last one, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That yeah. was M. Yeah. That was Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. I'm, I'm going to give you that. That worked, yeah. <laughs> right, um, that's the end of that feature, until you can get ones that work. Okay, so you won't hear any more of that, because it's rubbish. <laughs> Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know. Well, Suzanne wife likes some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturfed? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? 
You put, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not sending it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no, it's good. It, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it. Because every time I go around there, it comes straight from the goonies. <laughs> It's like mean? the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right. Well, one is one... a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box. It's a big vivarium. Yeah. But what I'm saying. And is... as it, and, and and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses. No, we've done this one. Do you know? Do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it and I thought, is it dead? Right. So he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking it's thing. Sat there, not moving. Right? Right? And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's it. It's 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 food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards. <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why, at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x-raying the fellas testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age. <laughs> well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's because it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're they excited sit, about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Can I can I take over? Hang here? on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got there's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses, yeah, so that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we, we're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you the you story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Right? Yeah. right. It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had, as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses smaller to put on a house. They put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on uh, display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, got, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What, what do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, We are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out instead of just going, You've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but, yeah. uh, right. I think this isn't gonna be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs>
Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before. Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal. That's sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a dog, <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were gonna say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to never dog. It. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It so was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know? You've got a dog. You've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know. What, this I, is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> It's between a fish and a dog. Problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet, um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, "What can we do?" Right? And one of the twins said, "You have my arm, right?" <laughs> And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got like three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they no, what, no, what, like, what doctor's doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say this is what we want and- No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another. They don't, doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go- Dr. Jekyll. I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it isn't- oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like- Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make them look different, right? Not. I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of. There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, Doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Look down. He's thinking. <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different, though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've. I assume they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, to near testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal. Okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But... That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah, use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. Zero seven distractions, very nice. Yes, I approve of that, Carl. Good, good choice there. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl came round to my flat. Mm. Uh, it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Nice place. Now, um, thanks. Now, Last week after the show, I think you guys were in the time you were in the toilet. Like Carl, 
got out the lottery, uh, ticket that he bought, he went, I'm feeling really confident tonight. Right. He was going, I, I was going, I laughed. He went, no, no, seriously, he said, look at the numbers. And I looked at him, and I think they were four, six, eight, twenty, thirty six, forty eight, weren't they? He was going, I just got a feeling about those, I wasn't sure. He went, although, you know, my girlfriend said that, you know, if, if I won the lottery, we'd probably split up because we like such different things, meaning she likes to travel and he doesn't. And so he said, he said, so what I said was, well, if I win, then I won't tell you. I'll just treat you a little bit more. <laughs> brilliant. That's brilliant logic. That is great. Anyway. I'm um, after her. I, I imagine you take care of her, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a good guy. How would you do it then? You just, you just sneak little gifts in slowly over many years. Yeah. You don't think she'd rumble the fact that you, like, don't work anymore and drive a Lamborghini? Well, I still do this, I think. What, just, like, as a kind of beard, as a cover story? Yeah, just... So you'd around. pretend to come to work, but maybe off partying and stuff in the daytime? Yeah. Clever. Now, he didn't win. <laughs> okay. I phoned him up Saturday night, he went one number. <laughs> uh, one number. I think it was eight, wasn't it? Yeah, it well, was they all, there was a lot of eights on my piece of paper, weren't they? So I think it was either an 8 or an 18 or a 48. And he, went, and he, uh, and he was disappointed, he said, waste of time. I went, well, he said, no, waste of time. He said, I've worked it out. I went, go on. He went, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. I went, yeah. He went, think how many words you can make out of them. He went, there are 48 numbers on the lottery. I went, yeah, 60 million to one. He went, yeah. <laughs> Not and worth I looked, it. I looked into that in the week, right? <laughs> and there's, there's even less letters in the Welsh alphabet. They've only got 20, <laughs> and yet they've got loads of words as well. So even 20, the chances, if there was 20 numbers and you had to pick six winners, it'd still be really... Unlikely. Yeah. 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 You should be a mathematician. And anyway, so we got talking about it. We got talking, that was me, him and Jane, right there. And, uh, and I told Jane that he said about, oh, if you won the lottery, no, he doesn't like to travel. And she went, why do you like travelling? And uh, he went, well, I'm I don't like planes, I don't, I'm really scared of planes and that. And she went, well, if you won the lottery, you could have a world cruise. And he went, no. She went, if I say, I went, no. He said, if you go on a world cruise, what do you do next year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Genius. it's brilliant logic, Carl. It's, it's but, you, know, you know on the world cruise you don't actually see the whole world. I mean, you... And if you did, it's not like saying, well, I don't want to see that twice. <laughs> do you know it what I mean? It is the world. It is the world. It's a lot. It's a lot to see. Mm. Um, and did, was, did, it it, never, sorry, did it never dawn on you before about the numbers in the lottery? Is this, have you been playing this for years and thinking that you had a good chance and it was just like you and a handful of other people that were doing it? Just as much chance as everyone else, but then when you actually sit down and think about sure. what you're doing. He's done it again this week. He went off doing it one more time and he showed me the numbers and he went, they look a bit more healthy, don't they? <laughs> oh. What numbers are you going for this week? It's alright laughing, but we'll see you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. So, you know people, if they, people do this and they win, if you take these out and people do these, you'll have to share it with someone. It's alright though, isn't it? Give them a chance. Tell them what. Give them. Give people a clue. What numbers are you doing, Carl? No, I'm not. I'm not going to tell them all. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you four. I've got. I've got five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. <laughs> okay. You're not going to give us the other two? No. Because that, that's what, a big difference, isn't it? What are the what, four's worth about eight grand in it? But if I give them the other two and it wins. Yeah. What are those, those four numbers again? Five, nine, twelve, twenty-six. Also coming up is Carl's. GCSE results. He took them in 1988, I think. Okay. And we've got, we've phoned his score, we've tracked him down. We've got Carl's GCSE, what's, what, what did I say? <laughs> How yeah. easy did you get rid <laughs> <laughs> Clinic, walking with E. Sorry about that earlier. You know, I like to keep a tight, slick ship, and that lets us all down, doesn't it? when something goes wrong with the shoddy equipment in this place. Mm. Why, why don't you buy some new stuff? You must be earning a bit of money now, wasn't you? We've got a few listeners now, we get adverts, don't we? Why don't they just buy a new CD player? You can go down to Richard Sounds and get one for 50 quid. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose when you're starting off, you, you save the money you make first before you spend it. I'd go down to Record and Tape Exchange, take all the four non-blondes and excess stuff you've got. <laughs> the record label. You'll be able to get an old there CD player. 25 minutes this week it took. Well, <laughs> the four, four non-blondes. <laughs> <laughs> we should make that some sort of 
Call in to win feature. <laughs> Carl, are we using the equipment that you used to use when you had uh, Pilkey's Making Music, the DJ outfit that you I love around? that. It, that was Carl Pilkerton and someone making? What Colin, was it? Colin Making. Colin, Colin Making. Colin Pilkey's Making Music. Genius. That's are we using right. that same equipment? Did you earn any money? Um, I, I paid for the tube lights and that. I, I sort of covered my costs. Did you? Did and you pay tax it? on that? And then, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's why they get Al Capone on, innit? <laughs> it is, yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't worry about the music policy. We're sorting that out. We've got some Verve coming up. we got uh, some Jimmy Webb. we got some Nick Cave. we got some Amy Mann. we got some Travis Corner Shop. You know what I mean? We're, we're sorting some ourselves out. We, just start, we haven't started yet. We're just starting getting going. we got exa uh, Carl's GCSE result. Let's just do it now. Should we do it now? Well, let's, I think we should have a, a white van man session. Oh, white van man. Because I think people tune in for the white van man yeah, session. Yeah, people who haven't tuned in, they don't know. If people aren't familiar with this, uh, <laughs> The Sun runs a column uh, every day which is uh, asking some punter from the street their views on the week's big uh, events, and we just thought, why not hijack that idea, but apply it to Carl Pilkington. I Carl? I have seen much news again this week. You've not seen much news? Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just it. Anyway. You, just give, give us it from your heart. So gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, because... Fletcher producer and threatened him, because they cut his bit, didn't they? But, yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was, he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the, uh, director? <laughs> Is that uh, what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have time, if you really, I mean, what's, what's the poem got to do with the, the film anyway? He, he was an awards So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean... <laughs> right, what would he have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for the thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it <laughs> and sure. left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... He knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a, not, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying it was justified. It wasn't, it wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an award <laughs> show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. <laughs> but, but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it for? <laughs> I don't know. But when I wanted to give you results... I said, I said, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again, just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm alright, though. All right, Carry on, then. Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic, um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue has had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's gonna, uh, net record-breaking sales, apparently. It's gonna yeah. be straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it, though? Do you think, well, um... as a song? As Both as a song, and do you, are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, it'll do all right. I don't think we, we have to worry about him. Okay. It, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll do all right. It's not my thing, but seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. really good. Um, what one do you final make, one. Yeah, one final one then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day. Uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. Yeah? So what, 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 what are they messing with? It's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Carl, I can't argue with that, mate. Um, I want to play a track now that, uh, I haven't heard for a while. It's the verb, isn't it? Yeah. Sonnet. Lovely song. 
Springsteen and Growing Up off of uh, Asbury Park album. Mm. They're great. They make you feel good, Springsteen, oh, don't they? He's a joy. He's an absolute joy. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, this, what, this, what all, this is what they're all what they're reading for. and writing about. Absolutely. Um, before you get the clues. Let me just remind you of the prizes you're playing for. We've got the Manic Street Preacher's Greatest Hits on DVD. We've got the film Human Traffic on DVD. Uh, we've got the Best Air Guitar Album 2, uh, on CD. Uh, Groove Armada's, is this their current album? Yeah. I guess it's not selling very well. They're still trying to promote that. You can have that as well. If you are a fan of the Ford Fiesta TV ad, of the Vodafone TV adverts, you will love the, the You will uh, love it. You didn't <laughs> think you liked indie. Well, you do. <laughs> exactly. And that's got, uh, Feeder and Travis and Daddy Drawn Boy and all sorts on there. Plus, my own copy, six ninety nine. it cost me, uh, The Pelican Brief, starring Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. If you've not seen that, panned and scanned on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what right. are the clues? Do you well, know well, that a pelican uh, I read the other day that has to turn its head upside down to eat? Give us the clues. <laughs> so, Rockbusters... Well, it? let me just explain. A, a bird, a bird has a, has a gullet, an esophagus and a gullet is all in one thing. It hasn't got peristalsis, which is the movement that we have that can make food. Uh, so a bird has to can only rely on gravity. Yeah. So it it has to have its head up and has to shake. It can't eat. You were going to say that, weren't you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Rockbusters. Um, you mentioned it earlier. One of last week's was it's a cryptic clue and then some initials. I was in Texas. I fell in a puddle on my knees. Knees got wet. Uh, w H. Wetney Houston. Yeah. That's the sort of same thing we can do. Use of the know. word knee twice there in the cryptic <laughs> clue <laughs> and in the final And the word answer. wet, I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is wit. Right. So fine. Good. So, um, there's three of them. It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Sure. Load of stuff to win. Here they go. Right, the first one. I'm writing these clue. down. Go on. Making it of them. Um, the fella has only got one badge left. <laughs> <laughs> the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. What are the initials? That's just E. Just E? Oh, just E. Just E. The okay. fella has only got one badge left. This is either a solo artist or a band. Yeah. Um, second one. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Say that again? The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Yeah. What's M the initial? M D. M D. M D. And finally... I really, uh, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. Now, give, I think us, give us that one again. I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. And that's right. M. Okay. Right, now I've got that one. Right. Okay. That's great. It's great. That's lovely. So, uh, yeah. That's great. I think, I think the, the second and third one's quite easy. First one is a killer. Is it tricky? Yeah, it's a tricky one. So, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and what, we pick a winner out at about quarter to two or something Quarter like two, that? yeah, absolutely. No, quarter to three, what am I talking about? Quarter to three. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. That's dynamite stuff, well done, Carl. Excellent. More, uh, educating Ricky next. Yeah. So, the first one was... The fella's only got one badge left. I don't have no idea. The initial was E. Go on. Will I get out the answer now? Yeah, give the answer, yeah. I think on. you should. That was Elastica. <laughs> yeah? E Elastica. The band Elastica. I'm right, not doesn't sure. Work. No. Doesn't work. The word, the word sticker and the and the ba yeah. and a badge are not interchangeable. And it's not his last sticker. It's elastica. Yeah, but like his last sticker. So <laughs> someone's got it. Oh, um, so, so so say a different word and it works. <laughs> oh, so if the band is is elastica, then it works. <laughs> God, if only Justin would have named it different. If she'd have just gone, let's call it is elastica, <laughs> then we'd have yeah. Second one. Um, what was the clue? The unmarried lady is a friend to eat out with. Go on. That's Miss Dynamite. <laughs> Miss Dynamite. Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's been running for four weeks. We've done we've done the obvious. Doesn't ones, work. Doesn't, doesn't work. Miss Dynamite. Again, if she'd have called herself <laughs> Miss Dynamite, it would work. She didn't. <laughs> See, what, what, what's happening is pop stars are letting you down by naming <laughs> themselves incorrectly for your clues. Those don't work. They don't count. <laughs> and the last one, <laughs> I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That yeah. was M. Yeah. That was Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. I'm, I'm going to give you that. That work. yeah. Right, um, that's the end of that feature, until you can get ones that work. Okay, so you won't hear any more of that, because it's rubbish. And you know, like, like say, with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them.
<laughs> so, so while we've been filming, you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried you know, about? Steve, you won't be laughing like that if you if you'd watch them because they, they do some weird stuff and that yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack. Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened? I'd, I'd been. Did it clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd were sort... there some other little bee paramedics? No, no. I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at you know uh, caterpillars knocking about. Uh, butterflies and stuff, so I was sort of aware. <laughs> so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day, I want you to do some constructive stuff. <laughs> but, but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than, like, most of the time. And I come out of the park, just crossing, like, a, a sort of a busy road and what have you, and I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air, and it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that. And, um, it just fell. It fell from the air in front of me, and it was on the pavement. I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still. Gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement. Nothing. Stone sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> yeah! Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I was... like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My right. god, it's a giant walking orange. <laughs> Every dream has come true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks. Stress. <laughs> Are you putting them to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... I'm always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! Oh. So what did you... it fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it. No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing, and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It's just rigor mortis had set in. Did it so put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. Well, when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching ants. You mentioned ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you say it like it was a garden party. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's, it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, there are hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one, <laughs> if you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it four. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? I haven't got eyes, has it? You just look at it, it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't. Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> You know, when when you see them in films, they're, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one, that's on the... It was it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, there's uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Uh, <laughs> and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And... If that stuff gets on you, does you in? Again, I'm, I, mm. so in a way, it's good knowledge because I mean I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that. But that's just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gozzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. 
it just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where our knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself! Another conversation with himself! Okay, Carl, I'm just gonna throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you'd change it, okay? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would I, would I change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So but... why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. So they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet they're still here, they're still doing that, they're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on earth? Yeah. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs> If, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish, they look, they look like they've got eyes, you can make eye to eye contact with them. <laughs> when you a jellyfish, what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. You can see, see a lot in eyes, do you know what I mean? You say, don't trust him, why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any and I don't trust them. In terms of... Um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, Right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, Right, go on then. And you go, This is man, here's a woman, here's a dog, here's a cat, here's an octopus, here's a. I go, Hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> say if. If everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula. Yeah. And a tiger. What would happen there? So a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I imagine a 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird that, isn't it? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone. The biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or something. Oh, it's like big that. though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. He's so I wouldn't worry him. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again, based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and mm. stuck it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about goldfish. No, it's goldfish. not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish will only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back on holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what a was well it eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she went to Mars and that. Ted, you're not going to believe this. Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? Well, most things that like don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a, you know, it's a jungle out there. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of, uh, you've got an enemy around every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I know it's like a wall into crabs <laughs> exactly. and young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you ever seen the program Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about uh, you know how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions, which is based on a French 
series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions. I'm just interested to see what your response is, and you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite curse word? Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's. But you, you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. <laughs> What would you do though if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You're on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say? Well, to it? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it, <laughs> and I'd say, "Nobed." I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, <laughs> it's done its stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, he's kicking and calling Nobed <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit! I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk! I'll just spit at you again. I'm not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker! This is why the face. Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> Seven distractions, very nice. Yes, I approve of that, Carl. Good, good choice there. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl came round to my flat. Mm. Uh, and it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Nice place. Now, um, thanks. Now, last week after the show, I think you guys were in the time you were in the toilet. Right, Carl got out the lottery uh, ticket that he bought. He went. I'm feeling really confident tonight. Right. I was going, I, I was going, I laughed. He went, no, no, seriously, he said, look at the numbers. And I looked at him, and I think they were 4, 6, 8, 20, 36, 48, weren't they? He was going, I just got a feeling about those, I'm not sure. He went, although, you know, my girlfriend said that, you know, if, if I won the lottery, we'd probably split up because we like such different things, meaning she likes to travel and he doesn't. And so he said, he said, so what I said was, well, if I win, then I won't tell you. I'll just <laughs> treat you a little bit more. <laughs> Brilliant. That's brilliant logic. That is great. Anyway. I'll look um, after her. I, I imagine you take care of her, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a good guy. How would you do it then? You just, you just sneak little gifts in, slowly over many years. Yeah. You don't yeah. think she'd rumble the fact that you, like, don't work anymore and drive a Lamborghini? Well, I'd still do this, I think. What, just like as a kind of beard, as a cover story? Yeah, just... So you'd pretend to come to work, but maybe off partying and stuff in the daytime. Yeah. Clever. Now... He didn't win. Okay. I phoned him up Saturday night, he went one number. <laughs> uh, one number. I think it was eight, wasn't it? Yeah, it well, was... all, there was a lot of eights on my piece of paper, wasn't there? So I think it was either an eight or an eighteen or a forty-eight. And he, went, and, he, uh, and he was disappointed, he said, waste of time. I went, well, he said, no, waste of time. He said, I've worked it out. I went, go on. He went, there are twenty-six letters in the alphabet. I went, yeah. He went, think how many words you can make out of them. He went, there are forty-eight numbers on the lottery. I went, yeah, 60 million to one, he went, yeah. <laughs> Not I worth looked, it. I looked into that in the week, right? And there's, there's even less letters in the Welsh alphabet. They've only got 20, <laughs> and yet they've got loads of words as well. So even 20, the chances, if there was 20 numbers and you had to pick six winners, it'd still be really... Unlikely. Yeah. 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 You should be a mathematician. And anyway, so we got talking about it. We got talking. That was me, him, and Jane around there. And uh, and I told Jane that he said about, oh, if you won the lottery, you know, if he doesn't like travel. And she went, why don't you like travelling? And uh, he went, well, I'm re I don't like planes. I don't. I'm really scared of planes and that. And she went, well, if you won the lottery, you could have a world cruise. And he went, no. She went, don't fancy. I went, no. He said, if you go on a world cruise, what do you do next year? <laughs> 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 oh, Genius. it's brilliant logic, Carl. It's, it's but, you know, you know, on the world cruise, you don't actually see the whole world. I mean, you. And if you did, it's not like saying, "Well, I don't want to see that twice." <laughs> Do you it know is I mean? the world. It is the world. It's a lot. It's a lot to see. Mm. Um, and did, was, did it, it never? Sorry, did it never dawn on you before about the numbers in the lottery? Is this? Have you been playing this for years and thinking that you had a good chance, and it was just like you and a handful of other people that were doing it? Just as much chance as everyone else. But then when you actually sit down and think about sure. what you're doing. 
He's done it again this week. He went off doing it one more time and he showed me the numbers and he went, they look a bit more healthy, don't they? <laughs> oh. What numbers are you going for this week? It's alright laughing, but we'll see you tonight. Yeah. Go on then. Let's have a look. You know people, if they people do this and they win, if you take these out and people do these, you'll have to share it with someone. It's alright though, isn't it? Give them a chance. Tell them what, give, them, give people a clue. What numbers are you doing, Carl? No, I'm not, I'm not going to tell them all. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you four. I've got, I've got five, nine, twelve and twenty-six. <laughs> Okay. You're not going to give us the other two? No. Because that's, that's what, a big difference, isn't it? What are the- what, Four's worth about eight grand in it, but if I give them the other two and it wins. Yeah. What are those, those four numbers again? Five, nine, twelve, twenty-six. Also, coming up is Carl's GCSE results. He took them in 1988, I think. Okay. And we've got- we've phoned his score, we tracked him down. We've got Carl's GCSE- See, it's, what's, what, what does that <laughs> How yeah. easy do you get rid of <laughs> <laughs> Clinic, walking with E. Sorry about that earlier. You know, I like to keep a tight, slick ship, and that lets us all down, doesn't it? When something goes wrong with the shoddy equipment in this place. Mm -hmm. what, why don't you buy some new stuff? You must be earning a bit of money now, wasn't you? We've got a few listeners now, we get adverts, don't we? Why don't they just buy a new CD player? You can go down to Richard Sounds and get one for 50 quid. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose when you're starting off, you you save the money you make first before you spend it. I'd go down record and tape exchange, take all the four non-blondes and excess stuff you've got. Take the record label. You'll be able to get an old there CD player. Twenty-five minutes this week it took. Well, <laughs> the four, <laughs> four non-blondes. <laughs> I think we should, I think we should make that some sort of calling to win feature. <laughs> Carl, are we using the equipment that you used to use when you had uh, Pilkey's Making Music, the DJ outfit that you I love around? that. It, that was Carl Pilkerton and someone making? Colin, Colin, Colin Making. Colin, Colin Making. Colin Pilkey's Making Music. Genius. That's are we using right. that same equipment? Did you earn any money? Um, I, I paid for the tube lights and that. I, I sort of covered my costs. Did you? Did and you pay tax it? on that? And then, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's why they get Al Capone on, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't worry about the music policy. We're sorting that out. We've got some Verve coming up. we got uh, some Jimmy Webb. we got some Nick Cave. we got some Amy Mann. we got some Travis Corner Shop. You know what I mean? We're, we're sorting it's ourselves out. We, just start, we haven't started yet. We're just starting getting going. we got exa uh, Carl's GCSE result. Let's just do it now. Should we do it now? Well, let's, I think we should have a, a white van man session. Oh, white van man. I think people is. tune in for the white van man yeah, session. Yeah, people who haven't tuned in, they don't know. If people aren't familiar with this, uh, <laughs> The Sun runs a column uh, every day which is uh, asking some punter from the street their views on the week's big uh, events, and we just thought, why not hijack that idea, but apply it to Carl Pilkington. I Carl? I have seen much news again this week. You've not seen much news? Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just that. Have anyway. you, just give, give us it from your heart. So gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, because... Director or producer and threatened him, because they cut his bit, didn't they? But, yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during See, the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was, he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the uh, director? <laughs> Is so, that what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have time, if you really, I mean, what's what's the poem got to do with the the film anyway? He, he was an awards So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean... <laughs> right, what would he have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for the thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it <laughs> and sure. left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... He knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a lot, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying it was justified. It wasn't, it wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an award <laughs> show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. <laughs> but, but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it for? <laughs> I don't know, but when I wanted to give you results, 
I say, I say, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again, just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm all right, though. All right, Carry on, on, Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic, um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue has had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's gonna, uh, net record-breaking sales, apparently. It's gonna yeah. be straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it, though? Do you think, well, um... as a song? As both as a song, and do you, are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, he'll do all right. I don't think we, we have to worry about him. Okay. It, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll do all right. It's not my thing, but seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. really good. Um, what one do you final make... one. Yeah, one final one, then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's, uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. Yeah. So what, 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 what are they messing with? <laughs> it's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Carl, I can't argue with that, mate. Um, I want to play a track now that, uh, I haven't heard for a while. It's the verb, isn't it? Yeah. Sonnet. Lovely song. Here's a new tune from a, a, a new fella called Papa Garcia. See what you think of this. Uh, see, if he was on MTV, I couldn't say his name. Why? Why is it again? Papa Garcia. Right, here's a new one from Papa Garcia. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Papa Garcia. Natalie and... Noosey, from, uh, the forthcoming album, Bring Me the Head of Papa Garcia. Catchy, that. Hmm. Quite retro, it's a bit of, a bit of Alton John and... All sorts of yeah, 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 lovely. Um, right, here we go. Quick clues again, and then, uh, we better do, uh, Educating Ricky. Oh, well, this is the favourite bit of my sh of the show for me now, Educating Ricky. I love it. I can't, well, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. anxious all week. Well, just quick, quickly on those clues, just in case people need to know again. Uh, stop throwing that fruit about CB. That Scottish fella's made a bit of an error. M. And, uh, God, you can make loads of toast with M. That's, uh, G. Oh, right. brilliant. Ricky.Gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. It's email only. Oh, yeah. I need some learning. I need some knowledge, Carl. Well, Educate me. I might be able to help you. Go uh, on. Uh, we've got three things, as always. I give them a little, uh, mm. heading to tease you uh, yeah. as to which one you want to learn first. Yeah. Uh, first one is, uh, is the tip included? <laughs> is the tip included? I like it. Um, second one, I want to come here in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight? Yeah. Okay. And the third one, how am I going to have to thump you? How am I going to have to thump you? Mmm. Okay, and you've trolled, to... what, the internet? So, I, 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 so, I, so if I can get into the mindset of this plan, uh, is the tip included? Well, obviously, that's probably not going to be about a weight. It's going to be, like, is it that, if that's someone losing the end of his knob, I assume. Um, arm are gonna have to thump ya. That's a man who lost his arm in a fight but then picked it up with the other arm and smacked him <laughs> with it. Um, what was the middle one? I want to come here in hindsight. Hindsight. Hind. Hind's right. sight? Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's someone was blinded by baked beans. Sure. So what are you going for then? Uh, I think I'd better go for, um, arm are gonna have to thump ya. Right, well this isn't... I've been struggling again, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, searching iron low for stuff, and, and some of these I had to leave till this morning. So right, because there's just not morning. enough knowledge out in the world, is not there, that you don't on. know about? I found out about something in the week about a guy who, um, uh, was playing tug of war. This is bonus material, <laughs> isn't it? He was playing tug of oh, war. Oh, uh, his arm came off. His, only his arm came off. Yeah, he got caught up in the rope, yeah. No, 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 he didn't. He didn't get caught up in the rope, he just was trying that hard and didn't want to lose. He kept holding But he allowed it. his arm to be pulled off. He really wanted to win. And well, the, other no. team, the, the other team pulled it and his arm come off. No. Well. I don't know who to believe. Well, uh, think about it. If he's gripping... Yeah. As soon as there's tension, like this, the, the arm coming out of the socket, the hand might release. I think his arm got caught up in the rope. And so it was involuntary, as opposed to him going, well, my arm's coming off, but I'm not gonna lose this! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
You might be anyway, right. That's the, that's the fact that's you're not a bonus. Tell us. That's a bonus fact. Yeah, well, that's so, educated me. Well, a man lost his arm. <laughs> oh, interesting. Go on. Um, how am I going to have to thump you? Yeah. Do you know the saying, uh, shut your face? <laughs> 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 yeah, so? I've heard the well-known Shakespeare, isn't it? Yeah. Do, you know, do you know how it came about? Uh, no, Joe Dolce. <laughs> uh, no, go on. It's, uh, ages ago. Oh, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. Like, uh, knights who wore armour. Okay. That's, uh, armour going after something, you know, that's how it came about. Okay, armour. Oh, um, yeah. They, they wore all the stuff and they had the helmet and say if they, they guard him something at night, mm. stood outside a castle or something. Yeah. And there's probably going to be two of them, mm. right? So they stood there talking and that <laughs> and, uh, talking about stuff and... The future. Sort of, what, yeah, medieval what, stuff. One yeah. of them, one of them's like, oh, I wish you'd shut up, you know, I've been stood here for hours and he's going on and on. Yeah, yeah sure. So he'd say, shut your face. Meaning... Shut the guard down on your helmet. The visor. And I can't hear you then. Uh huh. So shut, shut your face. Shut your face. And that's okay. how, that's how it came about. Well, I suppose that's, it would be interesting if I could just rely on it. I'm it? not sure it's true. I yeah. know. I just never know. I can. It needs to be cooperated. It's like I don't know where he got it from, but anything via Carl mm. is precarious. Yeah. Though. I mean, I feel like maybe you should give us your sources next time. You know, tell us. Where I you know. Got I'll tell you. From. Got it off the internet. Yeah, but where on the internet? I can't remember where that one was. I mean, I, I always go through like the news pages and stuff, and I. I, I this news should be updated because <laughs> they've only reached the 17th century, <laughs> which is last week with people eating um, tomatoes no, off no, lead plates. Then I look at news and there was stuff about a woman who was in a shop and she, um, I don't know, some they had some workmen in, workmen in doing the shop up, and. They had some wood glue left out and she asked for some pear juice and then the guy went and thought the glue in the thing was the pear juice and she went and drank that. But that's not really news. No. So I thought, well, we're not really that. I wish you hadn't told us. There was one about... So there's some poor woman now whose ties have, tiles have fallen off because she tried to put them up with pear juice. Yeah. See, that's the, that's the danger of mixing up pear juice with toxic glue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your wallpaper and your tiles and everything just yeah. fall down. Um, there's, there's also Be careful, everyone. Be please. careful. There's something about uh, kids having hamburgers, it makes them fat. Hamburgers. Uh, you, hold on. What? Do you, having f food with high fat yeah. content can make you put on weight? Yeah. Don't believe it. You're an idiot. What's so, the next one? Well, no, let's um, play tune. No, well, well, you've still we'll got back. to come, you've still got. I want to come here in hindsight and you've still got is a tip included, but we've got a bit of uh Well, I think we haven't played anything for a while, have we, in terms of the hip hop hooray no, feature no. that I used to uh, be so popular for. So I thought we'd just re resurrect that for one week only. He didn't pick up on that one, they did they? Didn't, they didn't really, they, 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 <laughs> Let me just remind you, hip hop hooray was where I played a hip hop track. And then I said hooray or Yeah, no well, no, I think didn't, no, didn't, didn't, didn't even have that. Really. Brilliant. That's brilliant. a great that's a great thing though. We could add that in, we could phase that in. Maybe at the end of the uh, song you hooray. could Hooray. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Look at that second Featuring Puff Daddy and Little Kim, that's notorious B I G. Brilliant. Notorious. Great, lovely. Carl just uh, said to me, hey, Art, here's something. You can't hold your breath to death. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried it, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> just another little lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's someone here who's in a really low ebb. Yeah, they yeah, 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 they yeah. would commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. They just <laughs> start holding their breath and thinking, oh, yeah. oh, it's brilliant. Well, what oh. did you learn in the week, right? I'm always doing all the educating. I asked you, you were talking about watching a program about jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, that'll be interesting. I'll try and find some stuff out, but I couldn't find anything that I didn't already know about them. <laughs> <laughs> it must be difficult for you to find anything you don't already know. So what what, what did you learn about jellyfish? I, I agreed with you by the end of it that they should be wiped off the face of the earth because they're balls of water in membrane, right, that go around stinging people to death. Yeah. Let's lose them, Carl. Let's lose the jellyfish. Yeah? That's, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. I, I was stung mm -hmm. by one. Did it, you know? Oh, you got stung by yeah, one? Yeah, I was on holiday and got stung by one. Yeah. And I, I don't understand. No, I don't not, understand. I'm not a fan of them. So yeah. that's, that's that. <laughs> good. So well, let's sort it out the jellyfish conundrum. <laughs> We've solved that with a particular worry. Right then. Yeah. So, uh, take your pick then. I asked him his, what, if he could have any animal the other day. Did I ask him on air as well? I don't know. Off air, he said, I've got it down to two. Right, and this was, he said, he said uh, what favourite animal we're looking at, or could I own one? And I went, you could own one. And he went, right, but could I own one, or would I have, would I have trouble? I went, Carl, you've got all the expertise, you can just have it in whatever it needs, and you go down there, he went, right, 
and I won't regret it and get fed up. I said, no, Carl, just what animal, if you could have any animal, what animal would you have? He went, I've got it down to two. I went, what is it? He said, either the rhino or the hippo. What's your logic? Well, uh, that's, I don't know, that, that was then. I mean, ask me tomorrow, and <laughs> I might have some other favourites. Do you know what I mean? When was that? It's a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> when was that? Well, you were there. Yeah, but, uh, you know. What's the, what, what are they today? Quickly now. First animal quickly, comes quickly now, any animal I want. You can have any animal in the world. Right. From party, one that's maybe extinct, anything you want. Right, I might have, um, I might, just for today. Just for today. I might have a scorpion in a, in a little box. A little scorpion in a box. No. What's your What's your thinking? It's the chimp every time. It's Just the chimpanzee or the gorilla. No, but have I told you that program about the scorpion? So How they all help each other out? Right. Have Scorpions all help each other out. No, no, no. This is brilliant. Right. Somewhere in the desert. Okay. Um. There's these in little. In the desert. It's like these little monkeys that are underground or something. <laughs> And there's, there's holes. Is this beneath the planet of the apes? <laughs> <laughs> the fourth in the series. Are they talking apes? Oh, I forget it actually. No, and you've got it wrong anyway. They're not monkeys. There's little monkeys under the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what are monkeys. they doing then? They're, they're lizards. They're into underground mines. They're lizards, if you remember. And the lizard goes to sleep, and the bloke comes along. You've told this, and, he, and the Oh, I've done it, all right. <laughs> monkey from monkey. <laughs> monkey. That's <laughs> what happens in his mind. From lizard to monkey. <laughs> oh, evolution would have been so much easier if Carl was around. Oh, right. oh, I'll turn it into a monkey. I'm up with a lizard. Just Say promise me once again, Carl, I've asked you before, promise me you'll never have children. <laughs> uh, uh, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were at this sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold? Do, I don't know what this is. I, mean, it's, I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr. Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah. She goes, oh good! <laughs> yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old cold. Oh yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh, <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's, uh, uh the, the yeah. history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, it, So, but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass and that holds the cold. But we're not smoking our now, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. A I mean, mostly a plate oh doesn't God, work. God, no. oh, God, no! So you put a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any work. No, that, that, that didn't yeah. work. So, uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctors then. Good advice. So a lot of people would have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate. <laughs> ash yeah, tray. Straight back. <laughs> so he went to hospital, and he went to hospital. And he said, "Have you got an ashtray?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went no, this, is, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> what is the closest thing, t sort of living? That's nothing. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's like the closest, like, do you know at some point something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't, no, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's so, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say like when you look at a, a stick insect. Right. You go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But there, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. Difference. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you're, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> What I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like, they, they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, they're insects that, 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 that have evolved to look like a leaf. Forget At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it... It, that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, they, 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 you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. This club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What? What are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, don't... Oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great, f slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in okay. You've moved on from In insects. the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis, where he got, like, a, a half a million pounds grant from a university, and I said, well, Pilkin does seem to, he's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. Apparently they're not doing anything, some of them are lazy. Um, he, we are granting him another, uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. Um, please welcome Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings, they walk a lot. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about Replacing blood with coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I have had that verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Uh, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort well, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well, uh... well no, 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 that's not, not being open-minded. Open open-minded isn't uh, believing everything you hear. Do you don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it, a lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form, but uh, according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? <laughs> But, but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, yeah quite but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. They're, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where he got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, you... no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in a, in a bad situation. Don't talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God. You know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right. So there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? they what do you mean? On another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big, big. It's big. It's a big boat. Uh, how long? What was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It's a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big because I know in your mind you're imagining this ark. There's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, then next there, two yeah. elephants, and it just and and it's just like it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. "Let's get on." But when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you? Are you saying that you won't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question it's not of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the jiggle for uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Ricky and I have had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. 
She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it? For her yeah, birthday. It was you a went birthday to the Cotswolds. Yeah. I just went for one night. Got the car and headed off. We found the B and B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B and B, so we had a quick walk around the car park. <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday. <laughs> the room was now ready. It's an all right room. Three biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> like a child. Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, no, no. Get off the bed. Not all the furniture. <laughs> The room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at that window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> we'd always have the car park. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. <laughs> we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner. I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. It was only about 11. He thought he was it. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did not. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> a Ford Sloth! I would love that ad campaign! Oh, that's amazing! Oh, God! The new Vauxhall Slug! <laughs> We had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> so, so, Suzanne, the head of the time so far, she's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready, she's seen the car park, and now let's go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that every time you, you go do, away? It, I like the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. She just looked out at the car park, just like, Memories! <laughs> but well, that's, that's what you do, though, isn't it, when you go to these places? There's nothing else, unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk around the church graveyard and, <laughs> and have a look. Like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> Okay, now, um, just moving, um, quickly on, just the last item on Carl's re-education this week. Uh, Rasputin, you've read a little book about Rasputin? Uh... What did you know about Rasputin before you read the book, Carl? Can I just tell you, oh. when I handed him this book, it was my house, he went, Ah, oh, is he the one that lived under the bridge? <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? He went, the fellow that lived under the bridge, and he had to, he went, and you had to pass him with a, with a, yeah, and Jane, um, went, you're thinking of... Um, Rapunzel. And he went, yeah. And I went, well, that's not Rapunzel either. <laughs> Rapunzel, L Rapunzel's, you had to say, isn't that, you know, you had to guess his The person who lived on the bridge was a troll in the three little yeah, brick graph. Yeah, I'm a troll, foldy well. So, to answer your question, Steve, that's what he knew about <laughs> Rusty Ewing. Okay? So, have you read this whole book? Can I just have a look at it, Rick? This whole book, it's about the size of a beer mat. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, but did, did, so did you read the whole thing? No. You didn't well, manage you to didn't read the whole thing? didn't even do that. Well, Again, some of the names in there are so long and foreign sounding that I just thought, <laughs> I can't, I can't remember all these. So I no. just got to the meat of the story. Go on, and what, what did then? you learn from about Rasputin? Right, um, he was, um, he was a monk. Yep. And, um, uh, Mad? He... Was he a mad monk? Hang on a minute. Don't, Don't confuse him. Sorry. Right. Go on. Um, God. You see, this is what happened in the exams. <laughs> Right, he was, he was... Oh, don't do that when I'm drinking, Carl, was, please, mate. He loved his women. And that's how, how the story started off. Uh, he had really <laughs> nice... The story started off, yeah. He had really nice eyes, and that's what everyone fell for, especially the women. 
Yeah. Anyway, they thought, the people back then thought he had special powers because, um, he could hypnotise people or something. Oh, yeah. And it was about a little lad who, um, yeah. who had some sort of blood clot on his leg. And, um, and he said, just calm down and you'll be all right. And people thought he had special powers, but what it was, what he was doing, he was saying calm down and he relaxed and it stopped the blood flowing sort of as fast. Mm. And that's how he got better. But anyway, that's the only bit of special work that he did. And then he kept going on and he was going in brothels and all that. And, um, and the people in the town thought this isn't right. He shouldn't be going about doing this. And, um... Where does he live? Uh, Russia. Right. Is that right? Yep. What sort of era? I thought you'd might know him, you know, about 1800. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. And, um, and then... Do you want to check that, Steve? You got the book? People well, got I know sick for a fact that's not right. People got <laughs> sick of him, and, um, and they said, oh, we'll have to get rid of him. So they tried to... He, he loved cakes as well as women. Okay. So they said, let's poison a cake. And they poisoned a load Easier of Easier than poisoning a woman, wouldn't and, it? Uh, and he had these cakes, and it just didn't kill him, and they, they were like, God, what's going on? And they kept giving him more and more cakes, and... <laughs> he was suspicious. <laughs> and that didn't work, so the fella said, oh, that's it, I'm going to shoot him. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it was the end of his tether. So, I mean, he was back and forth to Mr. Kipling's, he you know, like, He on. shot him once, and that didn't work, and the fella thought, oh my god. And he started running away, and Rasputin's running after him, and he shoots him like another, I think he took four Place bullets. Face full of, uh, Battenberg. Four, <laughs> four bullets. Who's the swear, then? Four bullets. It took to kill him, and then this fella who was after him chucked him in an icy lake, and that was the end of him. But I don't understand... <laughs> Sort of... What don't you understand, Carl? Well, the fact that, you know, he's a bit of a name in history. And I don't understand why, because <laughs> it just sounds a bit like my brother. <laughs> Does he love women and cakes? And do you think that'll be his downfall? <laughs> right, I want you to study... Right, if you want to do... Uh, that's the first introduction, right? If you want to do some extracurricular... What would that um, get stuff, me? Get, there's, there's a song by Boney M that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Suzanne told me about that, saying about uh, <laughs> Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah. But it didn't say anything about cakes. No. So I think if you get the 12 inch mix, no, they, 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 they say it, it, According to Boney M, and I don't know who's, who's correct, the bloke wrote that, or M, um, they put some poison into his wine. Now, I don't know if uh, uh, M have done their research mm -hmm. or whether, yeah, uh, they did suit him until he was dead. Um, it, I put it he was the greatest love machine in Russia. I, again, I don't think it says that in the book, but no. M might know more than that fella. So what's your know. final verdict on, uh, Ra Ra Rasputin? Just, um, just a normal bloke who didn't have that much luck, really. I, I you know, I, that's, that's what I don't understand. I was waiting for something special at the end, but... Just a normal fellow, really. Yeah. yeah, just an everyday... Happens all the time, doesn't it? Just an everyday mad monk. Yeah, just an everyday mad monk. You have to shoot and poison and throw in icy lakes to kill him. And, uh, who uh, loves women and cakes. I mean, <laughs> come on, do we need another one of them? <laughs> Boring! So oh. what would you say about him, then? How would you sum him up? I think you've done it. I think you've done it. There you go. So next week, Che Guevara, are you going to read the book? I don't know. Come yeah. on. Next week, Che Guevara. Take it home. There he is. Do it over. Well, which Sugar babes are freaks electric. Are they, Carl? Dunno. I feel like, uh, feels like Christmas Day. Well, you didn't get the gift you wanted. Yeah, do you know that, like, anti-climax? Yeah. When, uh... You've been looking forward to it for so long. Yeah, you know... Well, I mean, I knew you were looking forward to it, that's why it took you 14 years <laughs> to get the result, and then it was two other people that got them for you. Do you so wish I... that we hadn't done it? Uh, no. Nah. It's all right. It's all right, isn't it? What's your girlfriend going to say? I don't think I'll see her again. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes a man who knows about the Tudors and Stuarts, does she? Yeah, first gladiator, then the... Yeah, you've been bluffing. She goes, whenever she said, where's he going to Stuarts? go, oh, good. I like <laughs> yeah. lot, lots of things, but I, uh, look, 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 it's a bird. What happened to uh, Henry VIII's last wife? Oh, oh I wouldn't... I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Friends is on telly. <laughs> is on. <laughs> Can yeah. I just change the subject by saying things like, you know, about the, the only king in a pack of cards. <laughs> <laughs> that threw off the scent. That <laughs> threw us off the scent. That wouldn't, that wouldn't fool an invigilator, would it? Mm. That's the thing. You can't use that one uh, with an exam board. Carl, have mm. you ever logged on to Friends Reunited? It was the site that everyone was talking about last year. No. Are you aware of the concept? I've heard about it, but there's no one from school who had, had wanna see it again, really. 
So basically, for those that don't know, you have to log on to his website, and then you can help. It helps you track down your old schoolmates if they've also logged on and stuff. And uh, we sort of took the liberty, really, of, of looking on the Friends Reunited site and typing in your school <laughs> and trying to track down any of your old mates. We didn't get in touch with any of them, don't we worry. We didn't do that. We're we not going to surprise did. you with them now. No. But I was just interested to know, like, some of your thoughts on some of the names that I could run past you. I mean, these are people from your year. Um, just tell me if you recognise the names. Alison Birch. Think I remember. What's your thought? What's your thoughts on it? Uh, no, don't. Don't probably, be libelous. Don't yeah. say. Don't be like no. No. Oh. Um, posh. I uh, probably did pretty well in history and that. <laughs> Sarah Morris. God, yeah. Remember her. Uh, Go on. You're grinning. What was the thought? <laughs> Go on. No, just um, she was all right. She was a popular one. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it was, she was nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What about uh, Darren Buckley? He was, uh, he was one of my best mates. Was he really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What do you reckon he's doing now? Do you still keep in touch? Um, when my mum and dad were still in Manchester and they had a booty shop, he used to go in because the bookies was next door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he paints a picture. He used if, to, uh, if you do this in your history exam, Carl, you will walk it. Go on, so you, your parents had a butty shop, there was a bookies next door. Yeah, and he, 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 he liked having a bit of a gamble, so he used to, um, I think he works for some insurance company. Do you think that his fiance Beth knows he's got a gambling problem? <laughs> Yeah. Or that his two-year-old son, Lewis. No. Yeah, they live in Cheadle H Home. Hume. Uh, Cheadle Hume. He must be doing well. It's He's still supporting the Blue Army and frequents the shrine on a fortnightly basis. The funny thing with him is, right, when um, <laughs> uh, he used to stay over at his house and um, his dad was a copper. And um, uh, I remember his dad came down and said, right, I want to see you two. I thought, oh, God, what's happened? And um, got us round the, round the table. He said, um, do you know much about drugs? So we were like, what's all this about? So he goes, you know, they, they're not they're not good for anyone, you know, the stupid thing to get into. And we're like, yeah, we know. And he went, you know, do you? He said, yeah. He said, what's this then? And he'd found something in his bedroom, and it was a skittle. <laughs> what the sweet? Do you know little sweets with the S on it? <laughs> and oh, it really? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, yeah, it's a skittle. Yeah, I know what it is. He said, oh, he was bluffing like that as a slang word. Yeah, he thought he thought because he was a copper, he probably had to be down with all the terms and that. So we said, "Oh, it's a skittle," and he he said, "Yeah, yeah, I know what it is, but what's it doing in your bedroom?" <laughs> oh, and it was like, "No, it's a toffee." <laughs> so, uh, not Darren, uh, yeah, I know it's a toffee. It's a squid. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a, yeah. Steve. Am I mental, or are we been playing some great tunes We've today? We've been playing some great tunes, you're not mental. You're Onyx a genius. Yeah, our next FM wonderful with Armageddon Gervais would be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington in the chair now, the, um, oh, the talked about, the acclaimed, educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't normally mm. listen, yeah. um, basically, I'm educating Ricky. Yeah. Uh, do a bit of research in a week, find stuff, news, history, Anything that's interesting. Um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline. You take your pick. Yeah. Between now and three, you're going to learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are, um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, we've also got, uh, Hippopotta News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, chicken, you believe it. <laughs> chicken, you believe it. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to go with Hippopotamus. News. Hippopotamus? News? Yeah. News. Right, well, this one, it's, uh, I'm not going to take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on breakfast, right, because it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't have to tell you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um, no, I think you did. Right, I know it? what it is. I know what this okay, is. I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget. Right, there's a circus. I'm loving it already. Circus going on somewhere. I think it was in America. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right. A uh, little midget. Uh, circus, really packed out show, people are loving it. Um, <laughs> Steve, you were asked the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's not a circus, <laughs> Right. I'm taking good money to see it. So, everyone, everyone's clapping, and he's getting carried away. Um, 
Because <laughs> he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when, uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was, he was getting out of hand. <laughs> but he was jumping and he was coming down there all going, hi, yeah, and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right, just sat next to the trampoline, getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right, I thought he was in the audience. <laughs> no, he's not. It's a hippo, getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the he's hippo. He's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because he's Why is he sitting in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So, anyway, right, so the hippo's there. Uh, <laughs> he's getting annoyed, is he, because this, because the midget. He's going, I'm going to follow this. I'm yeah. going to, this thinking, is really annoying. Yeah. They're going to be, yeah. oh, yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's thinking, <laughs> he's already done a trampoline, my pogo stick out, he's never going to work. <laughs> yeah, go on, so there's a hippo waiting. Uh, this, this, see, it's a great story and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down, the hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the crowd are going the mad, the midget's mental. loving it, can't believe his luck. Although we think, you think, he probably knows is uh, dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying higher, higher. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline. Goes really high, but goes off at a funny angle. Oh, hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies out. Hypotenuse! Hypotenuse! Sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Ooh, hippo's yeah. there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish, though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a, uh, a circus with a midget <laughs> and a hippo, eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on going, come on. The midget flew off at a hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> this well, is this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what's I that? have to say, though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippot hippopotamus, I was thinking actually what didn't happen. Yeah. So... Yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, it is it that 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. It's Everyone knows that midget trampoline it. Thomas, are you mental? I'll ask you well, for trouble. Well, you, you know when he told me it. He said, and the midget. He didn't. He didn't mention the hippopotamus. <laughs> and he said, and the midget went on, and soon he fell off, and the hippo ate him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. <laughs> no, what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you want to do? Aren't they like very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither claimed. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 no, 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 and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was eating a midget and it's, it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely, I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, sorry. No, it's definitely fine. Yeah, okay, right, proof. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, um, I'd like to play a, a classic Springsteen, we're all fans of Springsteen there. This might be his debut album, I'm not sure, Greens mm -hmm. Raspberry Park. I think it is, yeah. Um, New Joyzy. Um, and this is Growing Up, it's great, it's classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carl, more people from your, uh, past. Debbie Carr? Yeah, she was, uh, she was another nice one. <laughs> one <laughs> what well, does that mean? Is that a euphemism? <laughs> no, she was one of them that you'd sort of go, she's nice, but you, she'd never be your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She was, Not really. even though she was in the same year, she seemed a lot older. Right. And it like, wasn't a teacher, was it? There was, there was three of them who all hung together and they seemed to hang around like the older kids, the ones who looked like men. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. What did you look like, like then? Well, it's just that I, I had youthful sort of looks. Sure. Whereas, like, the older ones had, like, beards and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gang of boys in the fifth form with beards. <laughs> Were they smoking pipes? <laughs> Go, come over here, me filly. <laughs> oh, you, you, oh, you Debbie Carr, come over here, you little beauty. No, yeah. She was like... I love that. It, oh, it was <laughs> hanging around with beards. There's the big boys. Oh, fishing. That's <laughs> lovely beards. What do you I mean? just see a, a whole row of George Bernard Shaw's. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do in history, boy? <laughs> yeah. They got an E. You're an idiot. <laughs> oh. They were like, um, you know, I'd be there sort of playing, punching people in the arm. Cause he's oh, yeah. oh, that's a great game. Oh, I love that, punch people in the arm. Is that part of the Olympics, now? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's, I think it was exhibition this year. Right. So it's, it's going to uh, be a pro next year. It's going to be the Winter Olympics because you've got to do it in uh, just a cap sleeve shirt sure. in winter. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're uh, playing that. She, uh... <laughs> 
But whilst but I was she didn't appreciate that. that, she used to go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always think whilst I was doing that, they were like the Charlie's Angels and they'd be sorting out a mission somewhere. Because they were really like, there was something about them that yeah. you thought, you know, well, yeah, first, they were private detectives. What if they were for a man they never see? <laughs> okay, well, the, the, here's a name I'm interested in because, uh, well, let me just tell you the name first. Uh, Adam Clifton. Hmm. Oh. Go on, what? what are your thoughts on Clifton? Uh, he was one of them kids, he was alright, but he had that thing when, um, if you didn't have enough milk. <laughs> he had, like, uh, wrinkly hands and <laughs> white, white, white bits in his nails. Oh! Because yeah. he didn't have enough milk. Yeah. yeah. So, therefore, <laughs> you didn't like him because you didn't get enough milk. This is not to be confused with the two people with the big heads and the webbed feet, is it? Webbed hands. Well, this was yeah, like They weren't related. They must have been somewhere along the evolutionary sort of trail. Do you know what I mean? They must have come from the same sort of stock. But no, you, you wouldn't have liked him. He's just, he's just one of them people. He was all right, but... He, he well, look, before people. you say any more, um, on, on Friends United, you can leave a little message which explains what you've been doing and uh, what's, what your, you know, your life's like now. And most people leave maybe two paragraphs. Yeah. Adam, I've printed it off. He seems to have printed... I think it's, there's about six pages here of stuff. He keeps updating it. And he, he just basically lists his memories about everyone, okay, at mm -hmm. school and uh, what he thinks of everyone. And uh, he says, I often see Simon, da 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 da, he's doing a right for himself, self employed illustrator, Mark Cooper, Carl Pilkington. Right. And your name comes up. Now, I don't know if you've told us this story. I think you may have done, but I can't remember the facts about it. It just says, Carl Pilkington with his pet bird. Was it a magpie? I can't remember. He brought it to school to show everyone and it flew away. <laughs> No, they do that, don't they? You show them the what what you, was the story give, there, Carl? You give them seed and they just leave. The, what do you mean? Well, it sounds like Kez. Well, that's <laughs> it. I was a big fan of Kez. And, um, <laughs> it was the time our dog had just died. Yeah. So I didn't have any pets and the cats were always getting run over. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so we didn't want any more pets. Yeah. But there was a magpie that used to fly about on the estate and I managed to, um, sort of tame it. And, um, in the end... With, with came, a chair and a whip? What do you mean became, you tamed it? Well, just used to sort of hang around it and talk But how did you it. get hold of it? Did you catch it? Well, eventually, yeah, it used to just come to me and I, The annoying thing was, it got to a point when I wish I hadn't bothered. Because it, <laughs> it used to pop me bike tires. It used to... It used to sit on, on like, if I was talking to my mates and I was on my grifter. <laughs> I love the way he just throws things in! <laughs> it's like an Alan, Alan Bennett play. <laughs> It, it landed on my tyre and it used to peck at the tyre and pop it and then oh, it, used to, no. it used to then never go away so it was always like <laughs> around the house and my dad said never bring it in. So it used to sit on the porch <clears> and <throat> I used to go out and it used to fly down and land on my head oh. and it really hurt. It used to like peck and stuff. <laughs> he thought it was a tyre. <laughs> so it wasn't so much tamed <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. So you took it to school and it flew away? Yeah. So did you take it in proudly going, look at my map? Oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh <laughs> no. It, it, I think it got a bit confused in the area that it was in, because I used to just keep it sort of around our estate, but sure. the school was a bit of a distance away. How did you get it so, there? Carrying it on my finger. Did you walk? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was happy there, and then it got to- uh? But it used to be one of those things that people would stop me in the street and sort of go, oh, what's that? And, and did, I don't suppose you called it Maggie. You didn't get uh, Charlie's Angels to go and find out what happened to it, <laughs> investigate. Were they impressed? No, uh, not really. No. But Listen, go on, any, any... Like, Carl, let's come back to it, mate, let's come back to it. Let's have uh, a hip hop hooray track. It's the big hip hop selection from Big Steve Merchant. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Just trying to sound hip. This is Spearhead from many years back. Uh, a track again, I think got largely overlooked at the time, but worth hearing again. People in the middle. <gasps> Spearhead, people in the middle. Michael Franti, surely one of the greatest uh, rappers, I think. He just, if you've, ever, if you've ever heard him bust it live, Rick, he's almost as good as me. I'm just going to tell the, uh, the, uh, the listeners there, Carl, this is quite a little insecure sort of chat, and he was just worried about that last bit. He was going, who would ever find that interesting? He was worried about people finding him boring. And Steve said, as I said, you know, it's, it's like an Alan Bennett thing. He went, yeah, but... You know, no one would care about Alan Bennett if he wasn't such a hit maker. They wouldn't care what to say. And we just looked at him for a while, and he went, "Ah, oh, thinking of Tony Bennett." <laughs> Bless him. Listen, it's almost the end of the show, Carl. Oh, yeah. And it's really been a Carl special. I this think, is a Carl special. Yeah. Well, next week we we'll we'll lay off next, next week. week. We have to. We're know. not going to. Uh... He wants to retire a little bit. Just uh... well, those old uh, lottery numbers might come up tonight anyway. Exactly. You might. What are they again? What's the four you've got with? Put them away now. What? Come on. Well, give us all six. No. Why? Carl, while you're um, rummaging for that, 
Five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. A few more names that you may recall from Friends Reunited. Go on. Lisa Shufflebotham. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember her? Yeah. She, uh... Was she one of Charlie's Angels? She, no, no, she wasn't that nice, but she wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> her and, her and her mate Rachel, I remember, I don't know why, but it was some sort of PE lesson where it had to be a bloke and two girls, and they were fighting over me. <laughs> and Could you hear what they were saying? They were, just, they, they were just like, I want him, and I, I was loving it. Stuck in the middle, and they were fighting over me. And then the next week, I thought I'll sit near them. What sort of game do they play at this school? Amazing. I don't know. That's an incredible game. But I think punch just, me on the arm. No, punch me on the arm, Carl. They just, they just went through it because the following week, I thought, right, I'll sit near them again because I quite enjoyed the way they fighted over me. But then they picked somebody else, and I don't know who I was with that week. So you didn't uh, didn't get any action with the shuffle both or a friend? No. And then as she got older, she went a bit off. <laughs> <laughs> like a, she's probably nice now. It's just, I mean, I'll say about myself, when when you get to sort of the end of secondary school, you do sort of go a bit odd-looking. Right. Do you know what I mean? When your yeah. sort of head grows funny. <laughs> I, I, I would just love to go back to his school of that era. I mean, just what happened to people, whether, you know, all people sprouting limbs and No, do you know what things. I mean? When, when you're like 12 and that, you, you're quite... No, not 12. When you're 10. When you're 7 to 10, you sort of look healthy. And you look at your pictures, then you go, "Yeah, I was a good-looking lad." But then, when you get to mm. late secondary school, something happens, yeah. and you just look a bit odd. Okay, well, what about Alison Thorpe? Not sure about her. I, I sort of know the name, can't put a face to it. Damien C uh, Comer. Again, know the name. Yeah. Can't remember anything. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, these are pretty much all the names I could find. We've had some interesting thoughts, though, and interesting anecdotes. Yeah. Anyone yeah. in particular that you'd like to uh, to say hello to that uh, maybe maybe listening now that no, you? No, I think I would have mentioned Darren Buckley if you hadn't brought him up. Oh right, he was, he was like me buddy. Yeah. yeah. Did so, you ever see the um, uh, Magpie game when you took it to the school and confused it? No. You're joking. That was the end of it, was it? Yeah. So where did it go? Probably uh, to some other kid. Because I mean, oh. it actually, it probably got killed. Because <laughs> if if it was being that friendly with other people, some people might have took advantage of it. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> well, there was a program on the other week about what in the way that shuffle both of them trying to take advantage of you. <laughs> yeah. There was a program on the other week about bear whisperers. Yeah. And uh, some blokes got really friendly with a bear, and then the, the, when they were leaving that area where the bear was, they said, "Oh, we've caused a problem here because there's some bear hunters coming in and moving into this area, yes. and it's going to get a bullet if it, if it acts like this." So they had to scare it away, and that's what I should have done with with Maggie. I should have terrified it a little bit so <laughs> it wouldn't trust humans. <laughs> Just introduced it to some of your schoolmates, I'm sure, would have yeah. freaked it right out. Well, the ones with Maybe the that was why it fled. It, it, didn't yeah, see, it's oh, no, it didn't see those two fellas with big heads and webbed hands coming towards it, did it? That would have terrified anything. It's like a scarecrow, like a two walking <laughs> scarecrow. <laughs> Listen, have we got time for a song for the ladies? What's, what's happening? Oh. Well, we've, we've not really thought quick, of then, quick, Just do it, just do it. Thanks very much. Well, hang on, no, no, we haven't li lined anything up, have we? I was going to play uh, Mary Lawson and that for you. And then Is this going to be the final track? Wait, yeah, be. it would be, yeah. We've blown it. We've blown it on the Carl special. We have indeed. I'll play it next week. So Carl there's got an E at history in GCSE. Oh. Any history teachers, anyone who can help Carl out, I think we should try and register him and take it this June. So, uh, so what's your homework for this week? Him. You've uh, got to read about Che Guevara, haven't yeah. you? The revolutionary leader. Yeah. Okay. Do you know anything about him at all? Have you got any basis? I just know that if you want to use his face on your business, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, like, if... if McDonald's wanted to have him as like instead of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> how does he do it, Steve? How does he do it? Man? Oh, we we listen. Just just play a final record, Carl. Say goodbye, and we'll uh, see you next week. All right. See you later. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Oh, yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there, Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Uh, we we might see a difference in Carl. He's a little bit shy. Um. There's someone here from the BBC filming this, part of that celebrity boxing thing, the fight, I think it's called, and they they want to get a little clip of this, so we're gonna let them film for a minute, and then they're gonna go away. Is that all right, Carl? Yeah. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be on camera, do you? Do you? I think it ruins radio, doesn't it? <laughs> do you well, not for the people listening, it doesn't. Yeah, but it does because people are like, oh. That, he sounds like a bit of a looker. <laughs> what you do? Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll see it on the telly. And they'll go, God, yeah, he, he, you know, his head is round. <laughs> <laughs> it is round, though, isn't it? So, <laughs> guess what? I got a call yesterday, um, you'll love this, Steve, mm. from MTV. And, uh, 
Uh, wondering if, um, they could screen test Carl. That's outrageous. I'm loving it. And I was going, yeah, and I come, I said, yeah, yeah, he's trying, I'll come down with him and I was, I was saying, what about this and that, and they were low loving it. I called him and I went, oh no. I went, why not? He went, well, I'm looking at my reflection now in the mirror. He said, I, I shouldn't be on the telly. What would you wear for your screen test, Carl? What kind of look would you try and cultivate? Because you've got to bear in mind that the audience out there, they don't know what you look like. So, would you be a snappy dresser like, say, Jonathan Ross, or would you go for your kind of street cash can't look? Can't wear a suit. Don't, you can't wear a suit. Don't hold it well. Uh huh. So, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, I'll prob probably wear my woolly hat, because that takes some years off me. <laughs> <laughs> it does, he looks about ten with a woolly hat on. Yeah. Okay. And, um, the, is it quite a cool woolly hat, or has it got a bubble? It's charcoal, I'd say it's the in, in colour. It, it, yeah, okay. Um, and I'll probably wear me, uh, me anorak. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's going for the. He's going, he's going, going for, for the an anorak. He's going for quite a grand look. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no one dressed for a jumble sale. <laughs> wow. But, yeah. But yeah. I'm not. I'm not that happy about it all, to be honest. You, are you going to do it? You're not going to do it. Well, I'm sort of stuck in the middle because throughout my life so far, <laughs> I've always just I've never planned for anything. Right. Like, it's just always happened. Yeah. Yeah. The time, you know what I mean, being in plays at school, never planned it, but when I did it, I went down a store. It was a trial, yeah, we all remember that. So, we, I, as I remember, you did Little Donkey. Did Little Donkey, yeah. And um, then later, someone was filming at the back. Was it your dad's mate? My dad's mate. Well, yeah, yeah, and on the camcorder, he listened to it back, watched him playing it. His dad says, just off camera, what does he say? I don't want to say it because I'm in charge of the show and I think be irresponsible. He looks like a right twat. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I, he gets I, I, home, he's watching that, and then here's his dad, just off camera, go, he looks like a right twat. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worried about? Your no, dad saying that or the Can word... I just interject, because I'm really worried about this idea of Carl being on MTV, because the problem is that, you know, let's be honest, Rick, I mean, we're, we're getting by the skin of our teeth, aren't we, really? It's yeah. only Carl that's keeping this afloat. Yeah. And if he gets on MTV and the world sort of gets a sense of him and they understand him, and, and he, he won't be ours anymore, we won't be able to control him, it'll be out there, it'll be in the Well, that's, that's the thing. Right. No, that's the thing, it, it, that's the terrible thing though, isn't it? It's like, Carl is my pet, but mm. I realise I've got to release him into he's the wild sort of. And, you know, because I love him, I know he's got to go free. <laughs> sure. But I yeah. wanna, I it's wanna- It's like Kez. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's someone like... beat him to death and we don't have to worry. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have you on though, I'll have you on as a guest. Uh, yeah, which, gets, which gets me on to something we've got coming up today. Oh right. yeah, he's got a new idea. Yeah. Right. Um, do you know, like, I've talked about ghosts and we had that good discussion the other week walking to the yeah. Circus Station, yeah, yeah, and I was telling you about ghosts and you were saying, Carl, don't be an idiot and all that. I uh, spoke to a woman in the week, done mm -hmm. a little interview with <laughs> You've her. done a little interview. Done Brilliant. a little interview, two minutes or so. With okay. uh, with a woman who's who's got ghosts in her house, so uh, I look forward to uh, hearing that later. That sounds got brilliant. Coming up later. Well, I'm going to play a classic tune now. I've I've just gone straight for it. I've gone for the jugular. This is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton. Carl was also nervous. Got a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His uh, his dad tuned in to the show. Yeah. Um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show, he just said, I just press the buttons, right? He's kept him from it. It used to be radio before and you never told him, did you? Mm. It's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along to it. Was that the, the twat incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but, but they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, me dad said, uh, uh, me mum said to me, don't worry, don't be put off this week, because, um, <laughs> you know, I've, no. I've, I've told him he can't listen, but I hear me dad in the background kind of going, well, Alex. <laughs> so, he might be listening. So that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. <laughs> I know. You we don't like, like it, do you? Well, this is good training for MTV, because then he can watch you on TV. I mean, what's he going to make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. doesn't keep you out on when you're with him and say, oh no, I just press the buttons. No, it's no. just, it's just, you know, it's like when when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents evening, I never gave him the note. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. So then what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance, um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you got to school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> so there's a parents' evening, so he went- <laughs> He said one kid? He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthew said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Machine. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. Well, <laughs> ah, she would turn on to MTV when uh, I don't know that, like their their slamming session. Yeah, yeah. and there they go. That's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. <laughs> I <laughs> recognise that Willie hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, did you see Celebrity Fit Club yesterday? I missed it. I didn't watch any TV this week. The only what TV I watched was um, Are You Good in Bed. 
I already knew the answer. I was it? Do you had to have to take points. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was no. <laughs> <laughs> I was off the scale. <laughs> well, talking off the scales, Rick Waller. Really? Is yeah. he off? What's well, happened? what he did is he lost, he lost weight and they couldn't believe it and he had a big argument with Harvey and they said go, never come back to it, right? And then he got to weigh and he'd lost sort of like ten pounds or something. Mm. And, uh, they were really, they said you've been starving yourself, haven't you? And he admitted it. And, um... <laughs> I thought he just wasn't wearing his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but he's, he was whinging all the time. He was watching it, he was doing a press, he was going, I've hurt my arm. And he was going, I feel sick. And he was going, um, and he was just lying all the time about whether he was doing the routine and what about what he was eating and stuff. And I thought, that's me with yeah, this celebrity like box. It is, it because like it's sort of like, and they go, how's it going? Do you have another drink this week? I mean, I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had a beer this week, no. <laughs> Did you do the exercise? Day and I go, yep, yeah, I've done all that, done all that, done all that. Yeah. And I try and get out of the sparring because it hurts because there's a man hitting me in the face for fun. Right. Because um, you, you know that's what boxing is. So, yeah, that is that? being I hit, yeah. And I like all the, I like all the bits except the being hit. I don't even mind hitting someone. Right, I'm so you, willing, I'd be willing to hit someone. Uh -huh. It's the getting hit that I don't like. Because I know you're a big fan of, um, like wearing the clothes, the sort of sporty gear. I'm I know looking you, good, you, love, you, you look good and you've, you've obviously switched they've, better, they've, they've, they've given, no, no, they gave that's me free, this for training. Free that, this was free so I know training. That's a perk you love. So, uh, and I know yeah. you like, um, kind of the, uh, the sort of various sort of nutritional drinks you've got. I know you're a big fan of those. I love the protein shake because mm. it tastes like chocolate. Mm. You know what? I've put on a couple of pounds since <laughs> I've been doing this training. <laughs> nice. I think it is the extra meal and, uh, So you're adding the protein but not, out enough to, uh, to take it off again. Yeah, but I, th I think I've, um, I have actually changed a bit. I've got a, 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 an inch on my chest, but an inch off my waist. So oh even right. though I've put on weight, uh, there must be a little bit of muscle happening uh -huh, uh -huh. somewhere. So I just, uh, just to, to, to recap there slightly, you're, you're, you're enjoying all the trappings of boxing. Yeah. But not the boxing. Not the getting hit in mm. the nose. Right. That's the one. And you are aware that that's what will, what, what will be happening during the, the actual no, fight? because that's... I've got a cunning plan. Okay. I'm gonna, Duck and dive. Just, yeah. Okay. Bob and weave. Dance. Uh -huh. I'm gonna dance. Well, I read in the paper, yes, I don't know how much truth there is, that, uh, Grant Bovey has recruited celebrity hypnotist Paul McKenna <laughs> to help him win. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't true. know if that's of any because I know you've got, haven't you got Berm, you've got uh, Spit the Dog. <laughs> you've got <laughs> a couple of ventriloquists <laughs> yeah. and an impressionist on your side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got Paul Pye from Desmond. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. getting me cheered in your corner. Yeah. Mentally. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. It's all a bit of fun. What do you reckon, been... Carl? Do you, do you think he's, uh, well, well, what's, what's McKenna going to be doing? Is like Grant Bovey going to be turning to a chicken and. No, yeah, I mean. he's, gonna, he's gonna do an Elvis impression. Yeah. And take off <laughs> if I say the right words. No, I think it's probably he's probably gonna just help yeah, it's, focus it's, and, yeah, and, and, that, yeah, I, I think there's there's lots of sports psychologists out there at the moment getting people so I'm sure it's uh I'm sure it's valid if it's true, I'm sure it's uh oh. fine. But um I've been I've been I've been getting tuned mentally learning how to hit. Yeah. Uh, that was my method. Eating and hitting. I think is. And do you work out to any of the music? I mean, do you put on the Rocky soundtrack? Because I know you've got um, no, a CD with all with music from the all five films, haven't you? No, we don't. It's all. It's. Um, I think they have the radio on down there, but you don't hear it. It's uh -huh. all you hear is people shouting, saying things like, "That's not like a fighter," and me going, "I'm not a fighter. Yeah, I'm a yeah. comedian." And is it quite intimidating down there? I mean, do they? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're nice it's, people, but is I'm, it I'm like... getting used to it now. But it's 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 it is a different world, and I was quite scared, and I I didn't. When like... you say to you, I mean, is it like is it like they're gangsters? I mean, is it kind of? No, I don't no, mean, I just mean, no, no. Has it got that feel? You know when you see it in films, they walk into those places and, you know, they're kind of, they're hard nuts and there's that feel like... Well, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're all, you know, they're all ex-boxers and stuff, so yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but no, they're not, they're not no, no, that's not, that's not, I mean, I... I suppose it's like they're real men. <laughs> well, yeah, and, um, they, they, they don't understand, really, that I am, I don't like getting hit on the nose. And they say, mm -hmm. well, no one gets hit on the nose. And it took me a long time to get over that, just, just taking a couple of punches. Yeah. I, I wanted to rule it out. Yeah. And, uh, um, but, you know, it, it's okay now. And, and, of course, they're... I know they're molly coddling me. They're not. They're yeah. using about twenty five percent power, yeah. and I'm still. And you I'm wear the headgear? Do you? Oh yeah, 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 and the gum shield. Yeah, I wanted to wear a crash helmet, <laughs> right, but they yeah. said no, and carry a baseball bat, and they yeah. said that's that's technically <laughs> illegal. <laughs> but um, I'm looking for I'm a changed man, Carl. What we got coming up? Got a bit of a uh, death in Vegas with vocals from Liam Gallagher. Final question for you, Rick. Do you on. think you'll carry on boxing after this is finished? Competitively? No, 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 just the training and stuff. Yeah, and I, I do, do the training. So? Yeah, no, I love the, I love the training. I love learning the, the skills and I, I, I do enjoy the training. I don't, I, I don't relish getting 
punched around. And, I, and I'm not worried about the fight at all. I'm really looking forward to the, the fight because, um, Grant's a novice like me. It's just when you get in with an ex-pro who you know could destroy you <laughs> yeah, any. Yeah, yeah. So you're scared of it. And, and, you know, they never lose their rag and they're really cool and they're really nice and they've never act, they've never even hit me by mistake. But even just tapping you like that in the yeah. face hurts. I just, I was walking down Finchley Road and a couple of six formers said, oh, you lanky gog like freak. And I just wondered if maybe you could pop round and have a word with them. <laughs> yeah, I will. I'll I will. some of your friends. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, an enemy of yours is an enemy <laughs> of mine. <laughs> But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, it's alright when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't, they don't carry that thing on, do they, that normal twins do? Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say, have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a, a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so, there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical, you can't tell them apart, okay, 50-50. Right. Obviously you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what one to to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So, what question do you ask? Why can't I ask like both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer. I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door <laughs> to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole anywhere near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there, yeah. they both look the same, they're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. Oh, this is logical. Well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on. Right, so you go up and yeah. you go, um, you Right, go hang on. Well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys. Okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, well me, and, me and Steve are decide which doors we're guarding. Okay? Right. Uh, I'm... Uh, look away, Carl. Okay, right, so we've decided, okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the question's right. coming. I got you got some posts for God here, yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just. Uh... Well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Eh? Um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, cut, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. 
I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So, you asked me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm gonna lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know, no, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what life's- <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of <laughs> questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glenn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right, which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> what? No, just, you yeah. know. Just... What? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what has he been doing? Why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental and that, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? what? Whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their no, the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're is not annoying as well. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why, well, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. you know, it could crack and- Because it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right, so like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in. And it. what don't you understand about art? What about art? Don't you understand the concept, specifics? No, so, I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. Was it a Dali, going <laughs> melting clocks and stuff? No. I mean, the first one was alright when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And, um, I don't know what happened, uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating- That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh- That's handy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of- Started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing, yeah. and he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour, we know. Well, Suzanne wife likes some art. Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three, three windows we can look out of. Right. 
Right. Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, the classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> uh, what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. <laughs> go on, right, okay. Right, what are you having? Right, is, what's what are they again? Is the tip included? Yeah, go on that one. Right. In Turkey. Nice. Um it's not, actually. Mm -hmm. oh. That's where I went and there was then little fellas after Suzanne in the kitchen. What? What do you mean? We stayed in a we went to Turkey. <laughs> You went and, um, to Turkey and there yeah. some little fellas. Well, they had quite a few sort of midgets working in the kitchen. Why? Is it is it a theme? No, Is it a theme just, holiday? Just, I don't know. Might get them cheaper or something. Was it? Were they, so they, they <laughs> you were get working. Get them cheaper. Uh, they were working in the kitchen, and one of them fancied Suzanne mm. and kept sort of eyeing her up, mm -hmm. and she was winding me up, saying, "Oh, not eyeing up and down, just eyeing her up." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, so what anyway. was she doing in the kitchen? No, it's like a pick, pick what you want to eat type buffy, but you have people clearing the tables and that, ready for you to come along. Are they low tables? And uh, <laughs> and you know, he was just keeping an eye on her. Well, what would he say though? Was he? What was it? Was it? Was Turkish? So I don't know what he was saying. He but he was. A, was it? Was, was little um, fella, yeah. Did he? Talk what do you mean, it? a little fella? What do you mean, little fella? Sort of dwarf like. <laughs> what do you mean dwarf like? He had magic powers, or he was four foot. No, what do you mean, Carl? A little bloke, just a, 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 like a normal bloke, but small. If you stood him in the desert, you wouldn't know. <laughs> But he'd be hard. Right, Carl. You should no, watch out for the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, underground. There's underground what, monkeys. Look, look, you can't just say there was a little midget fella who was eyeing up my girlfriend and then leave it. What do you mean? Do, what What was happening? This is a story to us. This is much more interesting to us than and she was deaf, right? And she hit her head. That's much more. I don't understand how this ma how it manifested itself. Did he come over and say something? No. Do you know? You know when it's like girls know, don't they? When when some someone fancies them. What do you mean there was lots of them as well? Do though? they? That's worth knowing. Who <laughs> 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 Right. Come on. Right. So you went into this. You went to this holiday, yeah. Yeah. And you went into the, the what the dining room or something. Yeah. yeah downstairs. And you looked over. Well, this is all. There's no one serving. Yeah. And they go. Wait oh, a minute. Hold on. You looked down and there was a little waiter. There was loads of them running around busy. <laughs> Why <laughs> though? Why? Because it was the... summer. What do you mean? Because it was summer. Them. They had more of they, them They on. come out in summer. They come out in summer. What do you mean they had more? What, what do you because mean? Because it's busy, isn't it? Well, no, they why they, in the why were they all midgets? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't heat stunt your growth or something. No. Uh, well, they just happened to. Maybe it was a thing that they did for tourists or something. I don't know. I just got on with my meal. It was a holiday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Right, so, 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 so midget serving. I'm not going to ask any questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're all little fellas running around, and <laughs> this one always was like, you know, oh, do you do you want a new serve yet? You know what I mean? Going out of his way. Oh, to sort of, for training oh, on the yeah. charm. Yeah. yeah oh. he was going out of his way. The others weren't. <laughs> right. Um, I think what was happening is he'd been working with Santa all the winter. Yeah. Oh, this is a little summer break. This this one he was your waiter, and so he was being polite to you. Maybe. 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 But what did Suzanne say then? When to well, she was what, using it to wind me up. What was she saying? Always. Oh, just like you know, look. look he I've, may be small, but he's well built like a yeah. He's all man. So were you jealous of a midget then? You were jealous of it. It is a bit annoying, isn't it? Why? It wouldn't bother me as much now because I've been with her for ages. Right. But at the time, that might have been one of our first holidays, and it's like you, you don't know, want what, to be going on. Pay for this holiday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and then uh, you get off with a midget. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So anyway, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you got chatted up by a bearded lady. So. <laughs> yeah, tell yeah, you what, yeah. I'll tell you what. No, that's got nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> what what were you going to say? What, what were you going to say? I was going to say the hotel was half bored and maybe. Oh right. I yeah. thought you were going to say it's just one of her shortcomings. <laughs> so listen, right? Play a player record. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Baddy drum boy, uh, born again. Right, just get this educating Ricky out of the way. So, turkey, yeah. So what is this again? Th this is educating Ricky, is the tip included. Right. Apparently a fellow was on holiday in Turkey. Um, it's just having a normal holiday. Weather's good, you know, he's having a good time. Right, is are all normal height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's having his meal. He is a load of screaming going on in the kitchen. Mm, hold on. Has his girlfriend wandered in there? <laughs> <laughs> they do, um, 
With a step ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the circumcised people in the kitchen, and apparently- What are you talking about? <laughs> whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. We were Sorry. sidetracked there for a minute. What are you really talking sick? about? Well, I'm excited about two things at once here. One, they circumcised people in the kitchen. <laughs> two, I guessed it was someone losing the end of their knob. <laughs> he did, yeah. I started thinking like Carl Pilkington. Extraordinary. That is amazing. Apparently it was- it was going on. It wasn't just a one-off either. Well, when I say a one-off, I mean, they did it more than once. Yeah. Right? Um, and there was, um, he was there for a week, and apparently the first night it was quiet, and then the rest of the week, every day, he'd be like having his- having his breakfast, or even his lunch, or even his tea. Yeah. Um, he'd be doing it all day. Oh. You'd be hearing- Lunch screams. and breakfast, fair enough for it. Yeah, it's yeah, it. tea time. They don't do that. Um, and apparently it's a tradition over there. You can't even make a complaint about it. It's like, well, you should have, you know, should have found out before you you come over. See, it. I can't believe this is Sorry, true. I'm a little like, bit I can't lost. believe there, this there, is He true. was in a restaurant, uh, uh, in a hotel, and there were people having circumcisions in uh, the, in the kitchen. Yeah. In the, is that right? I, 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 I'm even worried that we're bordering on the racist here, suggesting that that is tradition that Turkish people cut the end of their cocks off in the kitchen. Yeah. At meal times. Mm. I think you're wrong, Carl. This just sounds ludicrous, Carl. No, I don't think it happens everywhere. Right. I think this- Just in this, oh, this, this hotel? Certain- certain places. <laughs> certain hotels? Certain hotels. What, is it like two star? Yeah. No, I, 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 that, that, Why did he go to the Foreskin Inn? <laughs> <laughs> it was his own fault, wasn't it? <laughs> so, that- that's- Sorry, that- that's it, is it? Have they clued- Sorry, sorry no, wait, 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 that's the story. You, you educated me, right? <laughs> Once a fella saw some <laughs> Turkish people cutting the tip with their- No, I'm off in the kitchen. Thanks very much. Well, Thanks very much, Carl. Got any more? Well, well, there's things you can learn from it. Either don't go to Turkey. No! <laughs> uh, don't have calamari when you're over there. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. uh, Carl, you've done it again. Well. Exactly. You too. I love that one. Our next FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl. Okay, Carl, one more. Can we just- Don't get the ump, but just because so far you've come up with nothing. What's the la last one? Give us the teaser clue again. It was, um, I wouldn't have come here in hindsight. I wouldn't have come here in hindsight. Yeah. Right, well, give me some education. This will be the thing that teaches me something. I can feel it in my bones, come on. Uh, there's a kid in Kenya. Uh, uh he was messing about with some beans. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. We talk. guessed that as well. You did, yeah. <laughs> Um, he's fed up because we've guessed his puns, I think. He put one of them in his ear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the mum or the dad said, uh, oh, what have you done that for, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to take you to the doctors now. So they took the kid to the doctors, and the doctor said, oh, he said, I can get that out, I can sort that out for you. So, um, he took it out, and the doctor said, right, that's, uh, that's £3.50. <laughs> And the dad said, I've only got 270 on me. <laughs> and the doctor said, right, well, and put, he put the bean back in his, his kid's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, a couple of questions from me, very quickly. Are you sure that those were definitely the sums involved, really? <laughs> well, the equivalent of whatever, right. whatever the deal with in, in Kenya. Yeah. It was the equivalent well, of, you know. Oh, so, 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 you, so what currency was it, Carl, that you, you translated into sterling? <laughs> I don't know. No, it, no, it, it was saying in in the thing. It said the equil equivalent oh, of three pound fifteen, two pound seven. Did yeah. it say that? Yeah. So did it like, say that? Yeah. Did it, Carl look at me? Look at me. Did it say that? Yeah. He said. He said that's that. That was the. Uh, did it say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, it, it definitely said that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like I suppose. I don't know. I mean, all these things. The idea is, it's not like a lesson. It's like. I'll tell you this. See what you can get from it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so you yeah. look at what I've told you already. The, the yeah. knights who said shut your face. That's yeah, like that's that's amazing. That explains itself. Yeah. Um, turkey with the circumcisions in a restaurant. Yeah. No. Uh, that hold me in good stead. Yeah. Go don't on. don't go there. Or whatever. Yeah. This one. Um, if you're in, can you don't put beans in your ears or something? I don't, uh, doctors <laughs> or like, carry three pounds fifty or the equivalent I mean, of. I, it's just the idea that the doctor put it back in his ear. He, he forced it back in his ear. So is it still there to this day? I mean, is there any update on that? Story? Or did he go back with the three fifty? 
I presume he either went and got, a, like, a second opinion, see if he could get it cheaper. Right. For another doctor. Yep. Or, he said, right, I'll come back next week. Yep. After I've been paid. Or, he saw how the doctor did it and thought, well, I'll have a go at that, sure. i get home. Yeah, for free. But he never said what it, how it ended. No, no. But, I mean, I, I, I apologise for this week, so, I mean, I, I, I haven't got that much out of it. <laughs> 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 you, you're not being rich. Oh. Um, it was very, very light. Like I said, it was the, the tug of war. There was a fella in Scotland who had a load of tattoos. Okay. Is that it? Is uh, that the end of the story? Uh, 98 percent covered. Right. Just between his toes, he didn't have done. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Why not? Because it looks stupid. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just said, it just said 98 percent, um, done. Um, yeah. <laughs> what else? Are you, gonna, are you gonna drop the feature? Are you worried? I'm thinking about it. Don't to drop be, the feature. To be honest with you. Pete have probably written about this already. This has been a classic. I, I'm, con I'm concerned because it's my favourite part of the show. I'm wondering, if, is there something else we could, is it, what could we do to help you out? Because I just, I hate to see it go. Well, we can't really, and he's moving this week with the old fella, so that'll take him about true. four days. I'm worried that you're not, I'm worried you're not looking in the right, why don't you go to a library? Mm. Quick question for you, Carl. Who is a possible guest on next week's Pilkington? Uh, what are you going to investigate? Like I mean, what about your removals, oh, man? Right, listen. If you what if you've had a, a, a experience, it can be anything, right? It doesn't have to be you've seen a ghost. It can be that you've you, you know you think you're going to live forever, or you can you know do so. Any mentalist out there, if you if you're slightly you know wrong. If there's something wrong with you, just, um, you email know, Carl. Is it carl.pilkington at xfm.co.uk? Yeah. Carl.pilkington at xfm.co.uk. Would you like to be interviewed on yeah. next week's edition yeah. of Pilkington? If you are a mental of any description, just lonely, bewildered, stupid, just something wrong with you. Right, and you've seen some that's, you know, interesting to you but absolute bollocks, then <laughs> please call Carl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carl Dot Pilkington. Don't let that put you off, by the way. Don't me think, oh, they're gonna take the piss out of me. Just if, you know, in any way, if it's, you know, uh, fodder for us, then call up, because Carl will like you, you'll be friends with Carl, mm -hmm. won't you? Yeah, Quick, yeah. the clues, what's the answers? We always do this, we're running so out of time. Don't worry, we've got a tune, and then we'll come back with the answers from sure. Rockbusters. A lot of great prizes. All right, then. We'll have a bit of, uh, cash. Yeah. Cash one of the prizes we're giving away. We must, I think we must have a lot of listeners outside London, because all these are from Norwich and... Yeah. Have we got any listeners in London? Places, you know, it's where there's a lot of inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing else to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Norwich and Wiltshire. Well, you know, cheers for that, Amy. Well done. He yeah. waved then when he said that. He did, yeah. He uh, waved. He's, he's working. Little... No, he's working, uh, getting ready for TV. Of course he is, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so it's coming. this week. Could, is it, can it be arranged for this week? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll sort it out. Well, Thanks I'm busy so. this week. I'm moving. Of course. So yeah. let's, let's talk about that. Uh, um, and you can do, you can do an edition of Cribs. <laughs> Well, you can, they get rock stars to show them around there. Oh, we're done. Home. We're done now. It's it. finished. So, was I boring you? What day well, are you it's moving? Been what day are you today? It's been pretty bad. What are you talking about? I, don't pretty, I was talking and you just went anyway. Well, uh, we're still on it. You know we, we're still on it. time now. We have run out of time. It's six minutes to. I know, but we've got to finish now. Why? Because we've... We always do this. What, 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 what? Why are you getting stressed, Carl? Don't get, you do not cut me off when I'm talking. Whatever you do. Can I just remind you, Carl, it is Ricky's show. Yeah. I know, I know, but as the producer. Ooh, you've well, changed, go on, Carl. Go on, go on. As the producer, I've got to press this button. Why though? At six minutes two. Tell me why, tell me why. Because that's when he finishes. What, we've we finished? We've got clear for the next On the football, poster it says football. one to three, it, says, it doesn't say one to two fifty-five. Right. You, tell you, Carl, you press that button on. <laughs> Information for chameleons. <laughs> Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh God! Stay green. Stay in the woods. <laughs> stay safe. Good night. Oh God! Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You got a frog. He's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give? What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill five hundred and the turkey five hundred? Um, I don't think you should be killing. Uh, I reckon ten. Ten, because you've made your point with ten, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime? Like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely.
but I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I are was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain some, Something that. went, an onion, was yeah, it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, <laughs> but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away, putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get the rice. Yes, yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear from then nowhere. Then it was just like, it was onion. like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves, it's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So you what I'm saying is, who's, in, the, who's in charge? The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing but who's in that's charge? That's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if, doing if I, it, isn't if it? I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing well, that then, there's two yous. It's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this... and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are, you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. To answer your question, Carl. Uh, what do you think are then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> not your own. I'm not being funny though, so if you have a body transplant, right? And you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked. You look down. Yeah. Lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body? Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Walk through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true! That's really true! If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's- that's absolutely true! <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the- what, what- what happened to the cat then? 
it, it, it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and no. it was just walking around, bumping into stuff. I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can what? Have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W <laughs> I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> 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 it's a good job you're not gonna have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the- that's not the weird bit. <laughs> if he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit! He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit! The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't- I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way. This is scientifically possible. What's what? his want- yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but, <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject, I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. And if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice. Quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> We've been away filming in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been hot, hasn't it? Been up to a hundred degrees. Record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What you been doing, though? Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and that I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! When, when he jumps off the couch and starts <laughs> exactly. scratching against the door... Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk. You've got no other clutter going on around you. Right. And you just think about a lot of stuff. Black and Rebel Motorcycle Club, spread your love. It's time to give Carl. You're actually nervous, aren't you? I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, just to uh, recap, Carl is 30 this year. He never went to get his results of his GCSEs. So myself and Steve took it upon ourselves to phone his school, track them down, and we actually got your results. What did you think you took? Uh, did English. Right. Maths. Yeah. Uh, art. Right. Uh, and a I think I did physics. Okay. Well, you didn't do any of them. Eh? You didn't do any of them. You didn't register. You registered for one exam and took one exam and got results for one exam. So I don't know what you thought you were turning up to or you weren't registered or you didn't. You are familiar with the notion of registering for an exam. You have to kind of officially register in order to be eligible. What do you mean, register? I turned up for a couple. Yeah, you can't yeah. just show up. You have to <laughs> register for them. <laughs> you have to the pay this because it costs the school money, so they have actually paid for you if they thought you were going to pass. 
You can't just turn up on the day and ask some paper at the front. I never got a letter telling me that. Well, that's because you were never at school. But you did ma somehow register or registered for one exam. You registered for history. <laughs> <laughs> it's a topic that you've always been interested in. I, w I was saying to Ricky before, uh, World War Two. I loved it. Um, <laughs> not, I mean, not the actual event. No, the but study just of it, all you the mean. stuff like you know about the Anderson shelters and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, the bombs and that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when I took it, it had nothing to do with that. It was more about the Tudors. So it didn't. The Second World War didn't come up. You mean there were no questions about the Anderson shelters? Nothing. That's devastating. So. So well, what are you expecting the result to be? Is that seriously? Is that it? Yeah, it's the only one you took and registered. As far as the school is concerned, or yeah. certainly well, it's the only one that counts. Us. It's the only result. It's the only one that counts. Yeah, you've got. I don't. Did you register for yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have. Yeah, I've got certificates and everything. So what? Do you do that before the exam? Do you have to go somewhere <laughs> and sign something, or? Yeah, you don't check your results and then decide if you want to register. It's not like a millionaire when you look at the question and go, oh, "I think I'll take the money." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. But anyway, you must have registered for one, or maybe your teacher put it in. Put you I in for well, it. I didn't do it. So they must have been confident. They must me. have been confident. They must have thought your best bet was history. <laughs> right. So, what did they get? Um, you got an E, which uh, which I think, I mean, technically, is a pass. E. It's a bad pass, but there's F, can, and there's. I mean, you're not going to be doing a PhD. <laughs> you, can, you can get an F, right, which is fail. And then a U, which is ungraded. Now I don't know why the U exists, because F means you failed. U is like them going, you not only failed, but you wasted my time. <laughs> so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> we're annoyed yeah, that you took yeah. this exam. So, so they thought you'd... they'd register me to get an E. <laughs> well, they didn't. Well, they, think didn't you'd they, get they, they, they were hoping it was rather like you with the lottery. They were hoping see, for something better than. You nothing. see, I, I assume that the man who registered for that thought he can scrape an E if Anderson shout was come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, that's gosh. it. You've got, you've got. Now, what I'd like to do, Carl, is I've started your education. You've read a book on refuting. I'll be asking you a few questions about that later. I've got another book for you to read next week. Next week, I've I'm got not, a I'm little. Not in the mood. What? Not in the mood. Oh, come on! Look, what's that? What does that say? It's that fella. It's the picture of the bloke that he used to use for Citizen Smith. Yeah, Che Guevara. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was quite happy, I think, when he found out that Robert Lindsay was involved. He went, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> no worries. No worries, yeah. What so, are your feelings, Carl? What, what, what do you what think? Are you depressed? You I'm just a bit annoyed, because I'm sure I turned up for more, so it just wasted me time. <laughs> Listen, yeah. they don't matter. I'm, I'm sure you're doing. You're doing more. very well. You, you, you know, you can educate yourself. Uh, GCSEs are merely a step on the to help you, not just for education, but, you know, they're, they're, they're more vocational than anything else. You're doing very well. And you're reading books. Don't worry about it. It's but not a concern. Thing. But if you want, if you want, I'll pay for you to take history again. Carl, we'd love to see you get a C or above. And well, we're I'll, I'll pay to... for you, and I'll get you some books. Right? Now, listen, listen, listen. Um, we can look. look let, let's get. I, I reckon. Wh when are the exams? June. Something like that. Yeah. We're registered. We're trying to register next week, and I reckon you can get an A or B. In history. Busy. I'm busy. In history. No, I'm don't worry about it. It's just easy. I get your Brody's notes. If Heat Heat magazine, they 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 love you, Carl. They could probably sort some out. They could probably pay for a tutor. They got a lot of money. They sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out. I discovered this. It's always the Tudors and Stuarts. There's no fear for that. They're not coming up. Now, what do you know? What do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, because it just. It's too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't <laughs> Is that why you didn't... Okay. You, the Anderson thing, it was like, God, you know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. But when they... Oh, my granddad would have, like, had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors, it's like, I don't know even if they had a family back then. God. <laughs> <laughs> we come back. Hang on, hang sorry, on, hang on. I just sorry. sorry. No, I just because I need to introduce my new the, the new feature. Yeah, for the I record. don't know if I had a family back then. Come on, listen. Let me just ask you now, right? If you can finish this sentence, we've got a chance. Divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded died. What is it? We just need to do a little bit of work, but otherwise, I think you're going to be fine. It's how you remember what happened to Henry VIII's wives. Their little divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded. Uh, it's like spam. Support, what's it? Support, protection, anchorage, 
movement. That's how you're going to conf- That's nothing to do with the tuning. No, that's to do with the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, see, no, we're not doing Demonics biology. Demonics and uh, acronyms. What, and what happened to Henry VIII's last wife? Did she die or did she not die? Divorce beheaded, died. Divorce beheaded. Do you know that the only king that has got a moustache <laughs> is no. <laughs> The only king that hasn't got a moustache is the King of Arts on the playing cards. What's the record you play? Um, I want to resurrect the career of a different artist each week. This is an artist who's overlooked by the general public. It's a red card. <laughs> this is Amy Mann, and she always seems to get overlooked. This was a single a while back. Where I think it's called I? Red Vines. Play it, card. Fantastic. You see, what upsets me is the way that... Amy Mann, yeah. she's written songs as good as that, she's yeah. released it as a single, she had to, I think, put the album from which that's taken out by herself over the internet, she was Oscar nominated yeah. for the songs in the film Magnolia, she couldn't get a record label, I don't know if she's now got one, and yet there's people like Alanis Morissette shifting that is shed loads beautiful. of songs, I don't that understand fantastic. what the rules are, I don't know why she, she's not a household Carl, name. well there's what? beautiful things like that in the world, why do you care about epoxy well, GCSE? What, what did she get for history? <laughs> what did she get for history? Yeah. I think she did very poorly. <laughs> Why do you care? See, I was just going to say, this is backfired a little bit, because Carl is genuinely, I don't know if he's actually upset or embarrassed, but it doesn't matter. It, why does it matter? You were, you were 15 and didn't go to school. If you were my friends, I think you would have just said, oh, we can't find them. Why? Because but you just want them to to do with that. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's ridiculous. Do it, do, do it again because you want to learn, because there's, like, there's great things in the world to learn about. Don't worry. The GCSE is vocational, is, is, you know, it's vocationally for a 15, 16 year old to go on to do A-levels or, or whatever, or to get results, but you don't, you don't, you don't need that, because you've done very well. Um, you, oh, well, you don't care about the Tudor and the Stuarts. I mean, d d you know. I mean, I've had a couple of jobs, not this one, because you don't need qualifications to get, get a job. Obviously. Yeah. In the radio. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, absolutely right. But yeah. the ones that I have got, in the past, I did because I didn't collect them. I had to lie, and I didn't. I didn't like go mad. I didn't say I had A's and stuff. <laughs> but I think. I mean, I didn't put history down, so I didn't even know I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bonus. I, I, I kind of treated myself to like a D and a couple of C's and that. So it's like, well, he's not. I know. love the fact that Carl even then was honourable. It's like, <laughs> I'll at least put down the ones I think I took and lie, but the ones I didn't take, yeah. I won't lie about. Yeah, and, and don't give yourself a B. <laughs> exactly. If they're gonna find out you lie, give yourself a B no, well, next time, Carl. It could backfire, couldn't it? I mean, my brother's a bit mental and he used to do things like go for jobs and say, oh yeah, I've done this before. Like, being a, a mechanic and he's never even picked up a spanner. <laughs> and yeah, he'd have the confidence to go and f try and fix cars. <laughs> well, I'm not that daft, but, God, an E. Do, do you, who, who do you blame for this? That's just an easy way out. I have to blame myself, don't yeah. I? Yeah. What was but, the teacher like? Well, there's loads of different ones. I didn't like... I mean, the history teacher, she... It is my own fault, because with her, she's a bit mental, and I used to kind of stop the lesson by saying, Oh, miss, tell us about your, your um, fireplace you've got that is made from a gravestone. Because <laughs> that's what <laughs> that she That would had. stop any history teacher in their no, tracks. And she loved telling you about it. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I learned that from a teacher. So that's why yeah. I didn't know about divorce, head loss. <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Dandruff legs. Because Horse head loss. Dandruff legs. But re remember now, divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded survived. That's what you got to remember. And what, what's that? That's th what happened to uh, Henry VIII's various In order. Ways. In order. What does it spell out? No, it doesn't spell out it doesn't spell <laughs> no, anything. You just got to remember it, the rhythm. It, in order, in the order in which he married. Yeah, but it helps. It's like when my mum <laughs> taught me the alphabet, she taught me as like a song. A and like constant. E, F, G. Yeah, constant. Yeah. No, not like that. Huh. That's how everyone else could do it, and I couldn't do it that way. Why? What that tune did she do it to? It was, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. 